Hello fans and welcome to This Day in Baseball where we're going to bring you a full radio broadcast of today's game and before we do that I just want to thank Classic Baseball Radio and there's a link in the notes where you can uh, check out their full channel. They have many, many great radio broadcasts. And while you're listening to today's game, if you want to check out much more about the game and the players, look on the links below, and you're going to see uh, links to player pages, the date the game happened, the year it happened, and the play-by-play. Enjoy the game, and check out the links while you're watching the game, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that every time new content comes out, you're going to get that uh, firsthand. And thank you again for checking out this day in baseball, and enjoy the game. The Gillette Cavalcade of Sports is on the air. Baseball fans, this is Al Helper greeting you from the Polo Grounds in New York, where the Cleveland Indians and New York Giants soon will take the field for the second game of the 1954 World Series. Once again, your host is the Gillette Safety Razor Company, which takes pleasure in bringing you this and other great sporting events, such as the football bowl games and triple crown of racing, as our way of saying thank you for using Gillette products. And now for a special pregame treat, we turn the microphone over to a distinguished member of Baseball's Hall of Fame, Frankie Frisch. Frankie's down in the clubhouse, all set to interview Dusty Rhodes and Vic Wirtz. Come in, Frankie Frisch. Good afternoon, fans. Well, it was quite a ball game yesterday. I've been in a lot of World Series games, but that ball game yesterday was a dandy. And nobody left the ballpark until my guest, Dusty Rhodes. Oh, Frank. How are you, Dusty? Hey, what'd uh, you hit off uh, Bob Lemon? What was that pitch? It was a curveball, Frank. Well, uh, did you hit against him before? Well, only once. It was two years ago, I think it was. What happened? I was called out on strikes. <laughs> Wait a minute, you were called out on strikes? What'd you do, take three? Took all three of them. Well, now, how'd you feel Jesse walking up the plate? Well, you, Frank, you've been in a lot of these games. I, could, <laughs> I was a little nervous. <laughs> You're not kidding. The old Flash is really nervous. I mean, did you walk up the plate and say, well, Mr. Lemon... Whatever you throw, old Dusty's going to cut and slash, and if it goes, it goes. Where was the pitch, Dusty? High or low? It was uh, low below the belt. Away from it. Look, have you changed your stance since you've been on the polo grounds? We hear so much, they say, oh, that right field fence is short, the left field fence is short. And I was very much interested in what Bobby Fellas said the other day. He said, now, look, we had, he, he talk, he's talking about the Cleveland Club. He said, we had a lot of chances to hit the ball up in the seats. But we just didn't do it. And uh, Rhodes came up and pulled one, and there went the ball game. How was it? Well, Frank, I had the same stance that I've broken baseball with 1947. I haven't changed a bit. You stay, you still, well, you've you always been a pull hitter, right? Always. And uh, Leo sent you up in the right spot. Then he said, grab a bat, you're hitting. <laughs> you didn't feel any nervous, uh, any nervousness, eh? No. Hey, Dusty, where's your hometown? Well, Frank, I was born in a little town out in Montgomery, Alabama, Matthews, and I'm staying in Rock Hill, South Carolina now. Hey, did you ever play in that Montgomery ballpark? No, I never did. I saw Babe Ruth hit one. You know the uh, em- embankment? They have an embankment out there in left left field. It runs from the left field foul line to around the center field. And I saw the three outfielders standing up on that bank, and, and Ruth hit one in that, mo- uh, in that Montgomery ballpark, and the three outfielders looked like mountain goats chasing this ball that Ruth hit. Babe, Babe could have had three home runs on it, but he just, you know, lobbed around the bases. And he had a laugh at those three outfielders up and down that... I was in Crampton Bowl, wasn't it, Frank? Hey... You hit the name right on the head. That was it. Say, Dusty, I was very much interested in that ball game yesterday. I got a great kick out of it. What was the most interesting play to you yesterday? Well, I thought, Frank, that that catch Willow made out in front of field with a couple of men on. Oh, that was a terrific play, and it saved the ball game. Yes, it did. Say, the fellow, uh, he... I thought he was going right up in the center field seats. Never stop. He has no fear of fences. No, I... Great catch. I him bounce off a couple of them. Say, Dusty, I'd like to uh, have you uh, take this new Gillette one-piece razor set. Now, look, back here, this is what I'm interested in. This 1954 Gillette World Series record book. 
Hey, you'll get a lot of enjoyment out of that. And uh, say, fans, I'd just like to say a few words to the fans listening in. Your favorite store has a special World Series package, razor and book, both for the price of the razor alone. And continued such sex, sex, success in this series, and keep whacking them. Thank you, Frank. Nice I'll to always use this. Okay, thanks, Becky. And our next guest is a fellow that had a terrific day, Vic Wirtz. Vic, nice to have you on our Gillette program. It's a pleasure to be here, Frankie. Say, what do you got there, young man? This is what is known as a shin guard, and uh, it saved my leg quite a bit, and my instep also. I have a bad habit of hitting myself in the leg with a foul tip off the bat. Oh, in other words, while you were up hitting and during the game, when you cut at that ball, the foul tip's whacking, and they hurt, And don't they, they really hurt, believe me, so that's the reason for this. Just can I get it? Can we get a picture? I want to see how Vic puts that on. Now, which foot is it? It's on the right foot. It's my front foot being a left-hand hitter, and it just goes on exactly like that with the strap coming around the bottom of the foot. Oh. That's on there. That's all there really is to it. Now, listen, did you have any trouble with that uh, shin guard yesterday in running the bases? I had a little difficulty. <clears throat> Pardon me, on a ball that I hit the right field. Mueller made a throw in the first base. And, of course, I hurried back to the bag. And when I hit the bag, it was a wild throw. This uh, snap unbuckled. When I came into second base, it was flopping around on my foot. So instead of going to third, I had to stay at second. You'll have to get some way of flipping that thing off going down the first base line. That, that might have uh, cost the ball game, right? It could have cost the ball game. And today I'm thinking about leaving it off for the first time in two or three years. Well, now listen. How many hits yesterday, Mr. Wirtz? Well, I, I'll have to figure a little bit. I, I think it was four, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> hey, you know we all, all, anybody that's ever played the ball game, we always remember those hits. Well, you know. We never re remember the strikeouts, right? Never remember the strikeouts. And I still think the hardest ball hit in that ball game went foul. And that's the ball you hit, a left-hand hitter hitting to the opposite field. That ball was really smacked, the one you hit up against the scoreboard in left field. I remember what that. pitch was that? It was a fastball high and away, Frank, and I had to go to left field. Uh, it was away from me. I couldn't try to pull it, so I just tried to slap at the ball. See, the Giants will have to learn how to pitch to you. I hope they don't learn for the next six games. <laughs> well, you hit most everything, don't you? Fastball, K-ball? I think every assortment they had. They, they try, I think they tried everything. I, I even uh, thought uh, they threw a couple of sliders up there. I hit a slider. I hit a curve. Say, Vic, I got a little gift for you. I know you'll enjoy this. It's a Gillette... Razor. This is very familiar. I already have one, Frankie, but I can always use another one. Hey, the old Flash use them in the morning. Yes, sir. Feel I, mine, too. I use them, too. I get a kick <laughs> out of it. And what I like about it, and I'm going to keep talking about it because I get a kick out of it, it's the 1954 World Series record book. And fans, I hope you'll take the old Flash's advice and get yours right now because last year, oh, we had a little uh, tough time. We run out of them. we got to get them right now. Don't wait. Vic Wirtz, thanks kindly for being with us. Thank you, Frankie. Well, fans, it's time to wind up our clubhouse interviews for this afternoon. And now we're going up to the broadcasting booth. Thank you kindly. Today, we're ready for the second game of the 1954 World Series between the Cleveland Indians and the New York Giants. And the broadcast this afternoon is authorized under the broadcasting rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our listening audience. And any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express consent of the Commissioner is prohibited. Well, ladies and gentlemen, before the uh, lineups are to be given to you, I should like to say that due to a special presentation made by the Defense Department here yesterday and the stepping up of the time schedule in order that the field could be cleared in time for the beginning of the ball game, we were unable to bring you the singing of the Star-Spangled Banner from this ballpark. However, from today on, throughout the rest of the series, we shall be proud to bring to all our national anthem. And now, here are the starting lineups for this afternoon's ball game for the Cleveland Indians. Leading off will be Al Smith in left field. Hitting number two will be Bobby Avila at second base. The number three hitter in the order will be Larry Doby in center field. Followed by the number four hitter, Al Rosen, in center field. Or rather, Al Rosen at third base. Then comes Victor Wirtz at first base. Wally Westlake will be in right field in place of Dave Philly today. He'll hit in the number six position. Strickland the shortstop. Egan the catcher. And early win will be the pitcher. He has won 23 and 11 with three shutouts this year. Ladies and gentlemen, Barry Como and our national anthem. Mm -hmm.
Eric Omo and the singing of our national anthem here as the sun finally breaks through at the polo grounds in New York City. We had a cold, misting rain all morning, and it was very doubtful that this ball game would get underway. But the sun has come out now as Johnny Antonelli warms up along with early wind to get this ball game started here at the polo grounds this afternoon, the second game of the 1954 World Series. And here are the, here's the starting lineup for the New York Giants. Waddy Lockman will lead off. He'll be at first base. Alvin Dark, the captain of the ball club, will be at shortstop and hit second. Don Mueller, the right fielder, hitting third. Hitting fourth will be Willie Sehe Mays in center field. Then comes Hank Thompson at third, batting fifth. Batting sixth, Monty Irvin again in left field. Batting seventh, little Davey Williams, the Dallas Dandy, will be at second base. Batting eighth, Wes Westrom, the catcher. And the pitcher, the surprising southpaw this year, Johnny Antonelli, who has won 21, lost seven in the National League, and has pitched six shutouts over the course of the year. He's a Rochester, New York boy, now living in Lexington, Massachusetts. And Early Wynn, who has won 23 and lost 11, has pitched three shutouts for Cleveland, will be on the mound this afternoon. He's appeared in 40 games. He's from Hartford, Alabama, now makes his home in Tacomas, Florida. The plate umpire here this afternoon, American League's Charlie Berry in a fine one, Jock O'Connell of the National League at first, Johnny Stevens of the American League at second, Al Barlick, who handled the plate so capably here yesterday, will be at third base. He's the National League umpire. At uh, the left field line will be Lon Warnicke, the Arkansas Humminbird, and Larry Knapp of the American League will be down the right field line. So that's how the stage is to be set here this afternoon for the playing of the second game of the 51st series in the competition between the American and National Leagues for the World Series honors. And uh, once again this afternoon, it is a pleasure of Jimmy Dudley and me to be here for the Gillette Safety Razor Company over these mutual microphones to bring you the account of what we see down on the field. We sincerely hope that you'll enjoy being with us for the afternoon. And now, ladies and gentlemen, before we introduce our co-worker for the afternoon, and it will be he who will start off, let's pause ten seconds here for station identification. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. This is WGN, the Chicago Tribune station, your exclusive World Series station in Chicago. Right back at the Polo Grounds in New York City, where we're about to begin... The second game of the 1954 World Series, the New York Giants come out to take the field. They've won one ball game here in the series and lead the Cleveland Indians one to nothing in the series. So now, I should like to introduce for the first portion of this afternoon's play-by-play, the young gentleman whose uh, southern voice sort of streaked into the hearts of the country yesterday, working his first World Series broadcast. From Cleveland, their fine broadcaster, Mr. Jimmy Dudley. And it's been a pleasure to be with him, and I know this afternoon we're going to rear our ears right back and get some more of the same. Jimmy, how about you today? Thank you, Big Al, and hello, baseball fans everywhere. Ready to go in the second game of the 1954 World Series. And an interesting note on the two pitches, Johnny Antonelli, the left-hander for New York, and the right-hander Early Wynn, 34-year-old veteran of the Cleveland pitching staff, neither has worked the World Series game before. In fact, I was quite startled to learn from Early Wynn that he has never even seen a World Series game prior to yesterday here at the Polo Grounds in New York. Obtained by the Indians in 1948, Wynn uh, is making his first appearance in the World Series due to the fact that he was not purchased or traded to the Indians by Washington until December of 1948, the last time that the tribe was in a World Series. Johnny Antonelli was the property of the Boston Braves in 1948, but he worked just a short time, had no record with the ball club. And, of course, as we all know, Antonelli went from the Milwaukee Braves to the New York Giants. And it was one of the greatest things that could have ever happened to Leo DeRocha and the Giants obtaining the services of this young left-hander. It was their top in the year with 21 victories as against only seven defeats. The Indians saw him in spring training, and I can tell you right now, the boys on Al Lopez's club have a great deal of respect for this fellow who can really fire. He has a lot of swift. A left-hander with plenty of speed, good curve, and good control. If you find a left-hander with control, he'll give you a whale of a lot of trouble in any ball game. He's taking his final few warm-up throws, and the weatherman broke into the spirit here just about an hour ago as he cleared the skies overhead. The sun has broken through, and the polo grounds right now are bathed in sunshine. Al Smith, the Indians' left fielder, stepping into the batter's box, and it's play ball. The Giants winning the first game by a score of 5-2 to two yesterday got off to a head start on the Indians. And, of course, they'd like nothing better than to take number two. The Tribe, of course, would like to even it up as they head for Cleveland for game number three tomorrow. Al Smith steps into the batter's box. The Indians left field him, batted 250 in the first game. Up four times yesterday, had one hit. Antonelli looks down the alley, checks his sign. Back of the plate is umpire Charlie Berry, and quickly time is called. 
They're just now clearing the field, and the last piece of the bandstand goes back under the shed. And now we're back in position. Umpire Barry motions play ball. The veteran of the American League umpiring staff. Here's the wind-up. And the first pitch of the ball game is swung on. A high fly ball is going deep out into left field. That ball, if it stays fair, is going to be trouble. It's a home run for Al Smith on the first pitch of the game. And Al Smith has come through, marking his name in the record book, along with others who have opened a World Series game with a home run. And you can find the others that did it in the Gillette World Series record book. It's yours absolutely free, remember. That little record will be found on page 92. And Al Smith joins the select company of others whose names ought to be found in that Gillette World Series record book. First pitch, the first hit, a home run. The Indians lead one to nothing. Bobby Avila is up now. Right hand batter, he takes ball one high. The ball hit by Al Smith was right on the fair line and fair just by a couple of feet. That is his second hit of the series. Bobby Avila, Indian second baseman, batting 200. Swings on the next pitch and hits a ground ball to the shortstop. Doc is up with it. The throw to first and Avila is out on a close play. Doc O'Connor, the umpire at first, calling the play. One out and the batter is number 14, Larry Doby. Doby, a left-hand batter, steps into the box. In yesterday's ball game, he was up three times officially and had one base hit. Left-hand batter against left-hand pitcher. He takes ball when a curveball breaking outside and low. Ball on the count. The outfielders are playing him just about straight away, feeling that he will not be able to pull the left-hander, Johnny Antonelli. The Indians lead one to nothing in the first inning. One out. The next pitch, Doby swings and he misses a fastball. The count is even up. Ball one and strike one. Larry Doby, star center fielder with the Indians in the American League play of 1954. RBI champion of the league and home run king. Next pitch to him is a strike. He let a change up go by and the count is ball one and strike two. One and two the count with one out and nobody on. Batter on deck is Al Rosen, the Indian third baseman. Doby batted 272 during the regular season. Here's the windup. Antonelli's pitch and Doby drops quickly to the ground for ball two high and inside. Two and two count. This promises to be quite a battle between two boys who really know how to fire that ball. Early win and Antonelli. Left-hander versus right-hander. Youngster versus the vet- veteran. Right side of the infield, deep. David Williams, second baseman, midway, midway between first and second. The next pitch is strike three call. He struck him out. Doby has called it on strikes. There are two gone. There is the first strikeout of the ball game. Brings up Al Rosen, number seven. Indians third baseman. Rosen, in yesterday's ball game, was up five times, had one hit. That was an infield hit. His average during the regular season, an even 300. Last year's most valuable player in the American League, unanimous choice. He came up with quite a few injuries this year. Two out and nobody on. The first pitch to him is ball one, outside. A field in wonderful playing condition. Part of the rain which we had last night and this morning. The outfield is around toward left. Monty Irvin deep and straight away. The next pitch is too low for ball two. Ball two and no strikes to count. Monty Irvin in left for the Giants. Willie Mays in center. Pulled over toward left center. Shade now. Don Mueller in right field. Tony Cuccinello coaching at third base for the Indians. At first is Red Crest. Here's the wind-up. The next pitch to Rosen is a strike. Knee-high pitch is in there. Antonelli being very cagey, not giving him anything too good on that 2 and nothing pitch, but still in the strike zone. The count is 2-1 and one with two out. The first inning, the Indians at bat. The leadoff man, Al Smith, hit a home run on the first pitch. Here's the wind-up. 
The two one pitch. Rosen swings and fouls it off to the right, out of play, back into the stands. And the count is now ball two and strike two. Rosen will hit a lot into right field, surprising many fans who have not seen him before. And ball players, for that matter, they play him usually to pull. But he has good power into right center or down the right field line. Powerfully built boy. Two and two the count. Antonelli checks for his sign. West Western, the catcher. The next pitch is high and outside for ball three, and the string is out. Full count of three and two on the batter. And if Rosen should stay alive, it'll bring up the Indians' first baseman, Vic Wirtz. Two out here in the first inning, and nobody on. The Indians lead one to nothing. Here's the windup by Antonelli. Rocks twice on it. The 3 2 pitch is ball four outside. He tried to break a curve to the outside corner. Missed it. And Rosen takes a base on ball. So there is the first walk of the game. And it brings up number 23, Vic Wirtz, drawing a nice hand from the crowd who watched him in yesterday's game and those that didn't watch him. Read about it, of course, in the many newspaper, radio, and television accounts of the battle. Wirtz, during the season, batted 256, but yesterday he had four out of five. An 800 batting average to start off in his first World Series. That's a pretty fair bit of hitting. He had a triple, a double, and two singles. The first pitch to him is ball one too high. Wirtz will hit left-handers, as he has proved during regular season play. It was a happy day for him when he was purchased by the Indians from Baltimore. Runner on first, leads away. The next pitch is swung on. A ground ball is hit foul down the first baseline, out of play, fielded by Whitey Lockman. And Johnny Antonelli, ever alert, racing off the hill to cover in case that ball was fair. The count is ball one and strike one. Rosen, who was on his way to second, now back to first. Jocko Conlon, the umpire at first base. Stevens at second. Barlick at third. Charlie Berry, back of the plate. One again, Knapp around the foul lines. Two out in the first inning, a runner on first. The one and one pitch to Wirtz is too high for ball two. Ball two and strike one the count. On deck is Wally Wetzlake. In today's lineup, a right-hand batter against left-hand pitching. Antonelli is set, checks the runner at first. The two-one pitch is ball three. Inside with a curve... Westrom fires the ball back to his pitcher. That message of let's get it over. Ball three and strike one. Westrom, a veteran of many campaigns, had a fine day in yesterday's game. The outfielders are just about straight away. Here's the stretch. The 3 1 pitch. Ball four outside, and Wirtz takes the base on balls. Rosen now moving to second. Runners on first and second with two out. Coming up is number 31, Wally Westlake. So Antonelli here in the first inning has struck out one, walked two, and given up one hit. A home run by Al Smith, the Indians' leadoff batter. little conference now as Captain Al Dock comes in to talk with the pitcher and the catcher, Antonelli and Westrom. Dock is the leader of the Giants and a great one. Riding back to his position now, and Westlake steps in. Outfielders now move around toward left. Marty Irvin, deep and straight away. Runners lead off with two out. The first pitch, Westlake swings and wraps one through the middle. Out of the second base in the center field for a base hit. Here is Rosen coming around third, but he is being held up to throw a perfect strike into the plate by Willie Mays. and unhampered by injuries, might have been able to come on and try for the score. He would have had trouble, even a fast man. There was a perfect strike from Willie Mays, the center fielder, to Wes Westrom, the catcher. And now the bases are loaded, and here comes Leo DeRocha out of the giant dugout. Wants to talk to Antonelli. And we have a left-hander warming up in the giant bullpen. John Wendy McCall is the left-hander warming up. 
Al Smith led off in the ball game and hit a home run on the first pitch. Avila grounded out. Doby was called out on strikes. Rosen and Wirtz walked, and Westlake singled sharply into center field. Rosen still limping quite badly. As he rounded third, but was given the hold-up sign and a good thing for the Indians and for Rosen. The answer that Willie Mays is just as amazing as any ball player has ever been or ever will be. He's already established as a major league star. He's certainly carrying a big load, though, for a 23-year-old. But he's not the youngest player on the Giants. That honor goes to Joe Amalfitano, bonus baby, who just turned 20 last January. Not only their ages, but all players' heights, weights, batting positions, and fast performances are to be found in the new Gillette World Series record book. Better get yours right away. Mays again thrilling the crowd. Of course, for years, you'll hear them talking about that great catch he made in yesterday's ball game. Going to the wall in deep center field. To pull down a ball hit by Vic Wirtz that would have been a home run in almost any ballpark in the majors. Leo DeRocha, the giant manager, has had a talk now with Johnny Antonelli, hoping to quiet him down with the bases loaded and two out. DeRocha goes back to the bench. Westrom stays with the pitcher for a last few words. So Wally Westlake has come up with his first World Series hit. The bases are loaded with two out, and George Strickland steps into the batter's box. Strickland was 0 for 3 in yesterday's game. During the regular season, batted 213. Right hand batter, the runners move off. The first pitch is ball one high and inside. A fastball up around the brim of the cap, and Strickland now steps out. Ball on the count. Red Crest coaching at first base, shouting encouragement down to his batter. A change in the giant bullpen. Jim Hearn, a right hander, starts warming up and plays him a call. Here's the windup. The next pitch, Strickland takes a strike, a fastball, a throw to second. It's going to be close. Wirtz comes back on a head first dive. Getting a hand on the bag just ahead of the throw, Westrom to Davy Williams. Will heads up baseball. Westrom brought a perfect throw to Williams. Wirtz knew he had to get back in a hurry. There are two out here in the first inning. The Indians at bat with the bases loaded. One run home. George Strickland, the batter, with a count one and one. Rosen on third, Wirtz on second, and Westlake on first. The wind up. The next pitch is a change up outside for ball two. The count is two and one. Batter on deck is Jim Hegan, Indian catcher. The outfielders are playing him just about straight away and shallow. The 2 1 pitch. Strickland swings and pops it up to the infield. Right side. It is Whitey Lockman calling for this one. Under it now. He makes the catch, and the side is retired. So, in the first inning for the Indians, mark up one run on the total of two hits. There were two walks and three men left. Going into the last half of the first inning, the score is Cleveland 1, New York Giants nothing. Don't let that future rookie of the year in your family hook you on the end of a baseball question during the series or in the months to come. Get yourself and him one of those fact-filled Gillette World Series record books, and you can dish it out with the best of them. This authoritative book is jam-packed with dope little leaguers like to discuss. Scores of series games, modern record-breaking feats, players' rosters, basic rules, composite box scores of the 53 series. And it's free when you buy the one-piece Gillette Super Speed Racer. Travel case and blue blade dispenser at the regular price, just one dollar. Be sure to pick up one tonight or tomorrow at the latest if you want to really rate with your little guy. They're going fast. And now the last half of the first inning. The Giants coming out for their turn at bat. An early win, number 24. The big burly right-hander for the tribe is ready to work. A ball player who is strictly business, and on the day he's pitching, nothing else matters. He's pitching, and he wants to work himself into a mean mood. He makes no bones about it. He says, sure, I'm mean. That's my bread and butter out there on the mound. He kicks the rosin bag now off the mound, back to the grass behind him. 
and he's ready to go to work. He won 23 ball games during the regular season while losing 11. And the last month of the campaign was one of the most effective pitches in the American League. Number 25, Whitey Lockman, the Giants' leadoff batter, steps in. Left-hand batter, he had one out of five in yesterday's game, posting a 200 batting average for the series in one game. Here's the wind-up. First pitch is ball one outside. Ball on the count. Herman Franks, the coacher at third base. Freddie Fitzsimmons at first. The sun leaves us briefly, we hope. Next pitch. Lockman swings and chops one off the plate. Out toward the pitcher's man. Wind comes fast. Picks it up. Fires to first, and the runner is out on a close play. Woods taking that throw right out of the path of the runner. Lockman was digging hard, hoping to beat it out. Wind with a quick throw got him. Lockman going out. Pitcher to first. 1 3. In case you're scoring the game along with us, we hope you are. One out, and that brings up Alvin Dark, the Giants' shortstop. He had two out of four yesterday, giving him a 500 average to start off in the World Series of 1954. That at 293 during the regular season. Feet wide apart, a right-hand batter. Wins first pitch. He swings at it and fouls one off to the right, coming back into the stands out of play. Strike one, the count. Strike one, the count. Wynn looks down to his catcher, Jim Hegan. Here's the wind-up. The next pitch is swung, and there's a line drive going out into center field. But Dobie, playing him perfectly, moves over a step or two and makes the catch. Two gone. Number 22, Don Mueller. Two up and two down. The next batter, number 22, Don Mueller, the giant right fielder. Mueller batted 342 during the regular season. In that tight National League batting race... Willie Mays, the winner. Duke Snyder of the Brooklyn Dodgers and Mueller of the Giants. Mueller was second. Yesterday, he had two out of five. A left-hand batter. Two out. Swings on the pitch. It's a ground ball, a long hop taken by Bobby Avila at second. The throw to first, and Mueller is out. Mueller grounding out. Avila to Wirtz. 4-3. 4-3. So for the Giants in the first, it's no runs, no hits. Nothing across. And the score at the end of the first inning, Cleveland 1, New York nothing. Say, if you don't have that up-and-atom look and feel wonderfully refreshed after a shave, this is for sure. You're not using today's one-piece Gillette. It takes shaving cream and this precision-made razor to turn the trick. Why pass up shaving comfort and convenience? Get an up-to-date one-piece Gillette. Well, we certainly got off to a big start as that Al Smith stepped in there with that first pitch for a home run, didn't we? Well, you kept uh, telling me several times that this guy will have to tag that first pitch, and I kept saying to you all day, we do that once in a very long time in the World Series, but uh, your predictions all came true this afternoon, boy. Well, you know, there's quite a thrill in watching a batter step in there. Smith is noted for his ability to get a base on ball, but he has been notorious all season long for that first ball, if it's to his liking. He reminds me a lot of Ken Keltner member of the Indians in 1948 when they played the Boston Braves in the World Series. Smith was a softball player in St. Louis just a few years ago, and that's why that choppy, quick swing of his. Now in the first half of the second inning, leading off for the Indians is Jim Hegan, the tribe catcher, right-hand batter. Antonelli is ready. The first pitch is swung on. A ground ball is hit fair down the third baseline. It's right over the bag. Going all the way to the wall, and Hegan makes the turn at first. It's going for two. Irvin is up with it. The throw into second. Too late. Hegan is in there on the slide. Safely with a double. Going 0 for 4 yesterday. This, then, is Hegan's first hit of the series. A two-base hit. It's flipped the bag at third base. Actually landed in foul territory, but went over the bag fair. A two-base hit. Hit number three for the Indians off Antonelli. And the batter is early win, the Indian pitcher. Hearn continues to warm up for the Giants. Wynn is a switch batter. 
And a pretty good hitting pitcher. Runner on second and nobody out in the second inning. Antonelli checks the sign. The runner back at second. The pitch and there's a bunt down the third baseline. Hank Thompson, the third baseman, in. Up with it, the throw to first. And win is out as Hegan moves to third on the perfect sacrifice. The sacrifice for win going out. Third baseman to first baseman. 5-3. And now the runner is on third with one out. The batter, number 32, Al Smith. The infield now moves in. They'll try to close the door on this run. Tony Cuccinello, coaching at third base, moves in to say something to Jim Hegan, who is the base runner. Big, tall, six foot three, Jim Hegan. Big and yet one of the fastest men on the squad. First pitch to Smith. Ball one, too low. Antonelli giving him a change-up on that first one, just in case he had any notions. If he was going to hit it, he'd have to furnish his own power. The Indians lead, one to nothing. First half of the second inning, one out. The next pitch, a strike, a beauty, waist high, right over. And the count is ball one and strike one. Smith backs out and calls for the rosin bag. Bobby Avila is on deck. The outfield playing Smith straight away. Infield in tight. Antonelli shakes off a sign. Here's the windup. The one and one pitch is swung on. A ground ball is hit foul down the third baseline, fielded by Hank Thompson, who moves just about as quickly as any ball player in the business of that position. Ball one and strike two the count. Thompson, after giving the ball to Antonelli with a few words, trotting back to his position. It's always interesting to watch them. They move around from time to time, shouting to one another behind the glove, moving in to pass on a bit of information to a pitcher. The count is one and two. First half of the second inning with one out. Egan let off with a double and was sacrificed to third by the pitcher early win. Now Smith moves back into the batter's box. Here's the windup. The one and two pitch. He swings and fouls it down the left field line. It's curving into the crowd. Out of play. Ball one and strike two. Well, we started the ball game with the sun out. Very bright. Right now it is obscured by the clouds overhead. And a little bit dark, but of course, remember, in World Series play, they can turn the lights on any time they want to. Antonelli is in action. The windup and the one and two pitch, a swing and a miss. He struck him out. Smith going down swinging on a fastball. That is the second strikeout for Johnny Antonelli. And now Bobby Avila is coming up. Avila grounded out in the first inning, his first trip to the plate. Antonelli and Westrom get together along with Henry Thompson. They realize that here is one of the most dangerous batters in the business. As witness, his 341 batting average during American League play during the season. Egan on third with two out. First half of the second inning, the score Cleveland one, New York nothing. The wind up. The first pitch, Avila swings and hits a high top foul down the third baseline. Henry Thompson, third baseman, over near the stands. He's under it, and he has it. But he out that retires the side. And a fine bit of pitching on the part of Johnny Antonelli. Man on third and only one out, and he closed the door on the runner. For the Indians in the second, no runs, one hit, one man left. And going into the last half of the second inning, the score is Cleveland one, New York nothing. Kings of heel and toe, Johnny and Joe. Hey, dig these taps into four times. You guys and dolls should rave. We look sharp, too, because we just had a super Gillette shave. When you are beat, a bath slick shave gives you a charge, you see. Say, 
I could dance my shoes right off. Gillette shaves are for me. To look sharp, yes, your very best. To feel sharp, all the live long day, just be sharp. And skin whiskers off in the quick, refreshing Gillette way. While the supply lasts, you get the new Gillette World Series record book free with the Gillette Super Speed Razor Set. Pick up your copy in time for tomorrow's game. Back at the Polo Grounds in New York, going into the last half of the second inning, Willie Mays will lead off for the Giants with the Indians leading by a score of one to nothing. Mays batted 345 to win the National League batting crown. And in yesterday's ball game, was up three times without a hit. Right hand batter. Wins first pitch to him is ball one high and inside. Wynn has won 17 or more ball games every season since joining the Indians in December of 1948. Second year that he has won 23. Next pitch to Mays is fouled back to the screen out of play, and the count is even up. Ball one and strike one. Gwen is a tough pitcher, possessing a good fastball, curve, and the knuckler, or what he terms the fingertip pitch. Works the same way that a knuckleball pitch does, but he throws it with the fingertips. The one and one pitch is ball two outside, a curveball breaking away. The count two and one. He's not a fast worker. Takes plenty of time in between each pitch. Always studying his batter. The outfielders are deep. Straight away, but far back. Here's the windup and the 2-1 pitch. Mays backs off from ball three, high and inside. The count is now three and one. The giant center fielder. Looking down to Herman Franks, coaching at third. Leading off here in the last half of the second inning. On deck is Henry Thompson. Just as Wynn started his windup, May stepped out. One to nothing ball game with the Indians in front. Last half of the second. Now Wynn is into the windup. The 3 1 pitch. Swung on and a fly ball is hit into right field. High and far, but plenty of room for Westlake under it now. He has it. Route number one. One away. That brings up number 16, Hank Thompson, the third baseman. Thompson batted 263 during the regular season, had one out of three yesterday, giving him a good start at 333 in World Series play. As Bobby Avila said the other day when somebody was asking about his hitting during the regular season, he said, That's all over now. We all start even. The World Series. Egan out with a few words for his pitcher. Now back in position. One out and nobody on in the last half of the second inning. The outfield pulling around toward right as Thompson steps in, a left-hand batter. First pitch to Thompson is a strike, a fastball working to the outside corner waist high. Strike one. Playing Thompson to pull, Strickland almost over to second base. Next pitch is way high with a knuckle ball, and it is now ball one and strike one. Occasionally, that pitch will get away from the best of them. Gwen takes that slow, rocking windup of his. The next pitch is ball two, a fastball high and inside. Turn one the count. Bobby Avila, the second baseman, has moved midway now between first and second. Deep to the edge of the outfield grass. Words covering close to the line with a count two and one. Here's the pitch. Swung on and a fly ball is hit out into left center. Moving over fast is Al Smith. Under it now, he makes the catch. For out number two, Thompson fired to Al Smith in left center. Coming up is number 20, Monty Irvin. Here's a boy that hit 458 in the 1951 World Series, as the Gillette World Series record book shows. Coming through this little book, you get a great deal of information. 
Irvin steps in a right-hand body, crouches over. First pitch is a strike, fastball, let her high. Irvin, left fielder, 0 for 3, looking for his first hit. Two out and nobody on. The next pitch is strike two with a curve. Irvin steps out, a little bit surprised as that ball exploded away from him, but caught the corner. Going to the count. And the next pitch is strike three called with a curveball. Let him high. Again, he leaned away from the plate. He's called it on strikes. There is Wynn's first strikeout of the game. And for the Giants in the second, no runs, no hits, nothing across. At the end of two, the score is Cleveland one, New York nothing. And now we pause ten seconds for station identification. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. This is WGN Chicago, the Chicago Tribune station, your exclusive World Series station. Back at the Polo Grounds in New York City, the second game of the 1954 World Series. Now I understand that in moving to Cleveland tomorrow that they are expecting a crowd between 75 and 80,000 for the third game of the World Series. Well, I know this much, Jimmy, that uh, if it's anything like that New York series, New York Yankee Cleveland series, we had out there with uh, you fellas just before the uh, decision was made on the American League pennant. We can expect uh, even more than that. Uh, many people have said that it will probably be a record crowd for not only World Series, but also to ever see a baseball game, and I wouldn't be a bit surprised that might be right. Well, depending on the weather, they have a good chance of setting a new record, Al, and it's a great deal of pleasure and gives us a great deal of pride to be able to sit for the fans and on the World Series. We wish that more could see them. However, we hope that you folks all around the world are enjoying our reports. All right, in the first of the third, it'll be Larry Doby leading off. Left-hand batter was called out on strikes in the first inning. First pitch to him. His ball went outside. Ball on the count on Larry Doby. Indian center fielder. The sun still trying to break through occasionally. Looks down on us. Here's the wind-up. The next pitch is ball two high and inside. Watching this youngster, Antonelli, you can't help but feel that he's a little bit nervous, as undoubtedly all of the boys were in the first game yesterday. The 2 nothing pitch. Elby swings and he misses a fastball. He figured right, but Antonelli fired it by him. The count is now ball two and strike one. Lots of pepper in the giant infield. Thompson, Darth, Williams, and Lockman talking it up behind their pitcher. Okay on the sign. The 2-1 pitch. Doby swings, tried to hold back, but it was a fastball strike call. Two and two count. The wind is just the opposite from what it was in yesterday's ball game, blowing toward left field today. Cross from first to third. The 2-2 pitch. Doby takes strike three with a fastball to the inside corner. He's called it on strikes. And boy, he knew it. The minute that pitch was in there, he walked quietly away. Second time that he has been called out on strikes. The third strikeout for the giant left-hander. He'll give you a battle right down to the wire, that's for sure. Posting a record of 21-7 and seven during the regular season. Al Rosen now steps in. He walked in the first inning. Swings on the first pitch, and it's a ground ball past the pitcher. Dark moves over toward second, is up with it. The throw to first, and on a nice play. Rosen is out. Oh, that Dark really showing you how to play that position. Rosen grounding out. Dark to Lockman, 6-3. Two up and two down, and the batter is number 23, Vic Wirtz. He drew a base on balls in the first inning. Now the outfielders are pulling around toward right with nobody on and two out. Antonelli started the wind-up. Now pauses and goes back to the rosin bag. Two out. Here's the wind-up. The first pitch to Wirtz. He takes ball one low into the dirt. Good stop by West Westrom. Two 
Second game of the 1954 World Series. The Giants won the first, 5-2. to two. The Indians leading this one, 1-0, one first half of the third. The next pitch. Wirtz swings and hits a line drive out of a second base into center field on the hop. Going out to Willie Mays. Wirtz holding up at first on the throw to the infield. And there is his fifth hit in World Series play. This being his first World Series. So it gives him five out of six. Certainly has the fans buzzing. Now stepping into the batter's box is Wally Westlake. In the first inning, he singled into center field. Right-hand batter. Works on first. Lockman holding against him with two out. Here's the stretch. First pitch to Westlake is ball one high and outside. A lot of people have asked about the little shin guard that Wirtz wears on his right leg. Looks like an abbreviated catcher's shin guard. He wears it to protect his instep from the foul tips. Always foul the ball on his foot. Next pitch to Westlake is ball two, a fastball high and inside. Two and no count. With two out in the first half of the third inning. On deck is George Strickland. Antonelli okays the sign, checks the runner. The pitch is high for ball three. Three and no count. Notice that he's been having a little trouble with the curveball and his changeup. Again, Jim Hearn goes to work down in the giant bullpen. Leo DeRocha taking no chances. Wants to have a man ready to rush in there in case he should need him. Even with two out, a lot can happen. The Indians lead one to nothing, the first to the third. The next pitch is ball four outside. He missed with a curveball. Westlake takes the walk. Wirtz moves to second. Third base on balls, given up by Antonelli. And the batter is George Strickland. Strickland came up in the first inning with the bases loaded, two out. And pop to the first baseman, Whitey Lockman. Doesn't hit often, but he has come through with some very timely base hits. Runners on first and second. Moving off, ready to travel. The first pitch is fouled, pulled far down the left field line into the crowd. Count is strike one. Wirtz on second, Westlake on first. Hotfielders playing Strickland straight away. Antonelli is up with a stretch. The next pitch is swung on a ground ball, hit to the shortstop. Dark is up with it, throws over to Williams at second, forcing Westlake, and the side is retired. Strickland hitting into a force play. Westlake is out at second, 6 4. So, in the third inning for the Indians, no runs. One hit, one walk, and two men were left. And going into the last half of the third inning, the score is Cleveland 1, New York nothing. And now fan shares veteran first sacker Mickey Vernon of the Washington Nats, a slick, dependable fielder. Mickey's twice won the American League batting crown. Say, Mickey, how about this game as a career? Baseball has been good to me, Jimmy. A young man with talent can have a good life in the game. And, Mickey, how about that further word for the younger fellows? This is important for young men and some older ones, too. I guess everybody wants to be successful, and as a starter, you've got to look neat and really clean as if you think something of yourself. You certainly have got to look well shaved. For me, that means to use the Gillette razor. And that's it, Mickey, and many thanks to you. Mickey uses the Gillette Super Speed razor that shaves you clean in a breeze. One dollar complete with blue blade dispenser and travel case. Right now, you get the World Series record book free. And now we go into the last half of the third inning here at the Polo Grounds. Leading off for the Giants is Davy Williams, the second baseman. 
Williams was up four times in yesterday's ball game, but went hitless. He's probably wondering what's happened to these Indian pitches in spring training when he hit them as if he owned them. Right hand batter, the little fellas in there waiting. Went into the windup. The first pitch is fouled back to the screen. Strike one. Strike one to count. Williams leading off in the last of the third. The Indians out in front by a score of one to nothing. When okays the sign, works into the windup. The pitch is strike two with a curve. Breaking down and away from a right-hand batter. The count is strike two. No giant runner has reached base as yet. On deck is Wes Westrom. The 0-2 pitch. A swing and a miss. Egan drops the ball but picks it up. Tags Williams before he can get more than three feet away. Williams goes down swinging. Second strikeout for Wynn. And it brings up the giant catcher, Wes Westrom. He surprised a lot of people yesterday with his hitting. After batting only 187 during the regular season, he had two for four. And the two outs were line drives, one of them into right center that Larry Doby pulled down to rob him of a base hit. So Westrom is off to a good start with a 500 batting average for the first day's play. One out and nobody on. The first pitch to him is ball one high and inside. Again, the skies are clear above us. Pass to the third with one out and nobody on. Here's the windup. The next pitch, Westrum swings and he misses. Good long stroke, boy. He was going for the long one. Ball one and strike one to count. Al Smith, the Indians left fielder, deep and straight away. Wins next pitch is ball two, high. The count, ball two and strike one. Al Smith in left field, Larry Doby in center, Wally Westlake in right. Rosen, Strickland, Avila, and Wirtz the infield. The Indians lead by a score of one to nothing as a result of Al Smith's leadoff home run. The first pitch of the ball game. Now Westrom steps back into the batter's box with a count ball two and strike one. Here's the windup. The 2 1 pitch is fouled back to the screen out of play. Even up count, 2 and 2. Ball 2 and strike 2. A new ball tossed into play. Smith's home run was one that cleared the roof right on the foul line in the left field. All right, the 2 2 pitch. Fouled back to the screen, and Westrom is still alive with a count. Two and two. I was back into the press box where writers from all over the country are working today's ball game. Two and two count. Wins wind up, and the two two pitch pulled foul down the third baseline, out of play. Mike Garcia, the Indians' right-hander, has been announced as the tribe pitcher for tomorrow's game, the third game of the World Series, which will be played at Cleveland's Municipal Stadium. Leo DeRocha has stated he will announce his starting pitcher after today's game. Next pitch to Westrom is ball three, outside and low, and the string is out. Full count of three and two. Wynn was hoping to get one to the outside corner, but knee high, but it missed by a shade. And it is now three and two. One big pitch left. Three off pitch. Swung on and a fly ball was hit deep out into left center. Al Smith racing back. Moves under now and he has it for out number two. Westrom. Fly to Al Smith in left center. And that brings up the pitcher, Johnny Antonelli. Watching these batters strive to hit one toward left center, center and right center. 
You know, no one will ever knock a home run out of this park in dead center field, that's for sure. The Gillette World Series record book shows it's the toughest home run valley in the majors. 475 feet from the plate and 60 feet high. It's a long pull out there toward that center field wall. Antonelli, a left-hander all the way, steps in, takes ball one. First pitch with outside. Speaking of long ball hitters, Antonelli has had two home runs during this ballpark during the regular season. Two out and nobody on. Next pitch, swings and pulls it. Foul down the first baseline. Words moving over to feel the ball, but foul. Out of play. Ball one and strike one. The Indians out in front by a score of one to nothing. Two out for the Giants. When okay's the sign from catcher Jim Hegan. The one and one pitch. Antonelli swings and puts a high fly ball into right field. Westlake moving in, waiting for it now. And he has it. The side is retired. As again, the Giants put down an order. No runs, no hits. Nothing across. And at the end of three, the score is Cleveland one, New York nothing. Have enough. And now we head into the first half of the fourth inning here at the grounds of New York. The Indians leading by a score of one to nothing. Speaking of that long center field wall here at the football grounds, and it is a mighty clout, I think there's just one ball player. Alpha can back me up on this. Joe Adcock, I believe, uh, Al, hit one of those left center field bleachers, didn't he? Yeah, he hit one out into the uh, left center field bleachers, but there was also a story out, and I believe it to be true, that uh, the big fellow who used to play first base for the Cleveland Indians when he was uh, in the Negro League hit one into the right center field stands here. And you know who I mean, don't you? Yep, big Lou Keith That's right. one in those right center field bleachers. That's quite a poke, Jimmy. Uh, I doubt you're going to see it very often. That's for sure. Well, Hank Lieber, the one-time Giants player of the 1937 World Series, hit one back there in the well, which DeMaggio pulled down in the shadow of that... Marker says 483. Now we head into the first of the fourth. Jim Hegan is the leadoff batter. Antonelli's first pitch to him is ball one outside and low. For the double in the second inning, was sacrificed to third but left stranded as Smith and Avila went down. For the fine pitching of Johnny Antonelli. Here's the windup. Next pitch, Hegan swings. The ball is hit out into right center. Mays is traveling, going still under it. Has it. That's a good catch. The turn for the hands, and they love it. Wow. Yes, sir, he really patrols that garden. That'll bring up the pitcher. One out and nobody on in the first half of the fourth inning. When the teams move to Cleveland, that huge outer garden of Municipal Stadium, we should see some great plays. We've seen them here. A chance to sort of measure Mays and Larry Dope, two great center fielders. Early win, batting right, swings on the first pitch, foul back to the screen, strike one. Strike one to count. The Indians today have left six men on the bases. And yesterday, in the last three innings, they left seven on. Next pitch to the win, he swings and fouls another one down the right field line. Right the stands. Strike two. Going to the count, one out. Nobody on a new ball. This is thrown into play. By the umpire back of the plate, Charlie Burry. Of the American League umpiring staff. It's very close here in New York. Hot, humid day. Ball players are really getting plenty of opportunity to first fire, or as they say, sweat. Going to the count. One out. And an his next pitch wins, swings, and he misses. That's from him. Drop the ball, picked it up quickly, and tacked him. And it is the fourth strikeout for Antonelli. And nobody on the bases. Brings up the leadoff batter, Al Smith. Two extremes in the first inning. He hit off 
Home run on the first pitch. Second inning. Antonelli struck him out on a fat ball. The Indians lead one to nothing. Here's the windup and the first pitch to Smith. Ball went high and inside. On deck is Bobby Avila. The Indians have a total of four hits. The giant runner has reached for the set off early wind. There is a strike, a curveball dropping over knee high, and the count is even up. Ball one and strike one. Wind is a little stronger now, and of course, it is out of the sky to clear up the skies. Make way for today's ball game. It certainly didn't look like it this morning. The one and one pitch, ball two, outside. The count is two and one. Antonelli has four strikes. And has walked three men. Ball two and strike one on Al Smith. The Indians left. Double rocket windup by Antonelli. Hung on, pulled foul, down past third base. Cuccinello, the little round man, coaching at third for the... Made a pass at it, but decided to let it... The little fellow that has played a lot of base in this time. He posted a lifetime back of around 287. Turn to the count on the batter. Two out and nobody on the bases. Antonelli works into the wind-up. The pitch is swung on, foul up in the upper deck of the left field seats. A long strike and quite a scramble by the fans up there for a souvenir. Mad scramble for a one that cost two dollars and a half. Made five dollars suit, but get that ball. Ball two, strike to the count. In action. Antonelli in action. The fastball is inside and low. Ball three, and it's a full count now. Three and two. I notice neither pitcher. Has been shaking off the catcher. Antonelli has done it, I think, once or twice. Gwen has no sign that the fans can see or any of us in the press box. Stands and waits. The 3 2 pitch. Four inside and low. And Smith takes a base off. That is the fourth walk given up by Antonelli. Four walks, four strikeouts. He's got four hits. But he's been effective when the chips were on. Again, Again, there are two out, and the Indians have a runner on first. That'll bring up Bobby Avila. Avila now has one. He's been to bat six times yesterday. Up four times yesterday. He had one hit. Up five times yesterday. So it's one out of seven. Scored one of the Indians two runs yesterday's game. Mark Grissom. Mark They came up with a well-deserved victory. Two out. Run around first. The pitch. Ball one. A fastball. High and high. Smith on first. One of the American daring base runners. Playing fast. Quick to take advantage of any break. Any laps on the part of an, in- an outfielder. Three times during the six, it went from first to third on a sack bunt by Avila. The next pitch, Avila swings and there's a hard swing. It's beautifully knocked down by Thompson. Up the throw to second and it's out. A beautiful play. Thompson coming up with a wet stop on Avila's hard smack into left field. A great play for Thompson. Avila is probably saying highway. And Smith was fourth. Third baseman is second baseman. Five four. So for the Indians in the fourth, runs no hits. One man left. And going into the last half of the fourth inning, score is Cleveland one, nothing. Fans on the Indians today is Bob Feller. It's his 17th year at the Make Something Star. You know, he had to say the other day that I think fans. Here's how he put it. When I'm bushed, he's shave makes me feel like a new kid. 
No, super speed razor. You can feel plenty good. It's handy one piece and change blades in a jiffy. Some a quick wrench cleans it. And time can be Each with blue blade dis- The left flipping in travel case, one dollar. The speed goes for just an hour. The left. The new bigger than ever included. World Series record. Back up a couple of free. Let us snap a sure while that. they last. Now, now add to your baseball enjoyment and all year round. <laughs> and now it's the last of the fourth, and the fans here at the photo are the calling for a little action on the part of the Giants. White Sox is the leadoff man, the top of the batting order. First pitch, ball one inside. Win has retired, nine men in a row. Sorry, sir. Even one, New York nothing. Alvin Dark on deck. Dawson moves in, in case of a bunch. The next pitch is ball two, outside. Two and no count. to no strikes. Hmm? The Indian right-hander. Pitches a strike. Pass for waist high. Ball two and strike one. He's a great competitor, this win. Okay. Here's the sign from his catcher, Higgins. The two-one pitch. Lockman swings and fouls an uckler back to the screen. He what? Watch win a lot of times, even with that nut ball. Have a count of ball three now with a nut on a certain batter. He wants to get him up with a nut play. He stays right with it. He, used it on. he recalls the time that he was ball from Yogi Berra in the count of three, three no strikes. Struck him out. Three knuckle ball pitches. Here's the foul. Rockman swings and pulls it foul down the first baseline. Getting ready for Simmons. Out of the way. Ball two and strike to the count. Last half of the fourth, the Indians beat it by a score of one to nothing. Lockman, there's the wind up and the two-two pitch. Took him out. Wings and he misses. He's struck him out. Coming up now is Alvin Dodd. Nobody on. And right now, ten seconds for station. This is Mitchell, the radio network for all of the WGN, your World Series station in Chicago. And now Doc steps in with out and nobody on. First pitch is a strike. Wynn getting the outside corner with a good curveball. Before World Series. Second game of the 1950 World Series. Doc is. Next pitch. Outside. One and one the count. The guy. Just broke on top by taking the first two. Beating Bob Lemon. Five and two. Yesterday, when and Pinelli going in the number two game today. Out the other. straight away, but deep in all feet. Oh. Next pitch as I strike with a fastball. Just above the knees. You want to. And of course, you use win with that knuckleball. Fastball seems even faster. One and two count. The pitch is swung on a ground ball. The shortstop, big hop taken by Southern. For so the first in time, Dark is out. They're two gone. And coming up now is number 22, Don Mueller. He's two for two in this. You know, he was number two man in this year and had a solid 333 for last year. For past performances of all players, check the great new Gillette World Series record. You'll get a lot more pleasure out of these games when you have it. The book is free. The little one-piece Gillette razor at the regular price. Two out and nobody on. Mueller, left hand batter, swings out. Pitch and throws one. Foul. That's the right field line. Into the seats. Out of play. What a thrill for the fans in that direction. Foul ball. What a foul ball. Just a long strike. Wide. Wins next pitch. Wide one. A plate for ball one. One one. This is the last of the fourth. The Indians beating by a score of one to nothing. Up. up in the first inning, grounded out. Second to first. There are two out and nobody open. Pays the sign. It's a fastball swung on a fly ball to right field. Westlake moving over. He has it. 
And the pack has retired. Our giant players have gone down to Orleans. No hit. And not a giant man has reached first. At the end of four innings, the score is Cleveland 1, New York nothing. Fans, the better you know America, the better the future looks. We, along with Canada, are growing and improving in just about every way. Our population has been increasing at an amazing rate, giving us more families, bigger families. Our working force has expanded greatly. Life expectancy is longer. We're saving more and spending more, eating more and better food. The benefits of education, travel, and leisure are enjoyed on a scale never before known. Discoveries and inventions have created new and exciting opportunities. Our Canadian, as well as our American listeners, continue to write for the free booklet, Future of America. Address Box 1776, 1776, Grand Central Station, New York, 17, New York. A special issue in French is also available. Going into the first half of the fifth inning... The Indians leading the Giants, one to nothing, here at the Polo Grounds. Speaking of Indians, Al Lopez, the manager of the tribe, had a visitor today. He got quite a kick out of watching the ceremony. Presentation of a real Indian chief headdress. Presented to Al Lopez by a fine old friend of his. Full-blooded Indian, Yellow Horse. At one time, a pitcher with the Pittsburgh Pirates. A friend of Al Lopez over the years. And now in the first of the fifth, it'll be Larry Doby. His third time to the plate, Antonelli has struck him out twice. Called it on strike both times. First pitch, Doby takes ball one. Curveball breaking, breaking outside and low. Ball one the count. Outfield is around toward right. The next pitch, Doby swings and hits a fly ball. And he's one out into short left field. Coming in fast is Monty Irvin. He's under it now and makes the catch. He got a late start, but caught up with it for the out. That brings up Al Rosen, Indian third baseman. Has a walk to show in two trips. First half of the fifth inning. This ball game really moving along. Antonelli's wind up. The first pitch, Rosen takes ball one inside and low. The only run of the game came in the first inning. When Al Smith, Indians lead off batter, hit the first pitch over the left field roof. Next pitch to Rosen. He swings and hits one through the hole into right field, a base hit. Hitting to the opposite field between second and fir- first. Rosen is on first now with hit number five for the tribe. That is his second hit of the World Series. One out, a runner on first, and Vic Word steps in. He has a walk and a single. And certainly has the highest average of all of the players in the series thus far. Wirtz is batting 833 at the present time. Yesterday's game and today's. One out. First pitch to him. He takes a strike. Fastball by him. About knee high. Antonelli showing the stuff that made him one of the best pitchers in baseball during the year. We'll work carefully on him. Next pitch to work is a foul hit into the stands. Off to the left of the plate. Out of play. Strike two. That one going far into the upper deck. The Indians have had runners on base in every inning of the game, but have been unable to score. They left three men on in the first, one in the second, two in the third, and left one in the fourth. They now had a total of five hits, and Antonelli has walked four batters. But he's had it in the tight spot. This time he has a runner on first with one out in the first half of the fifth inning. But here's the stretch. A look to the runner at first. The pitch is swung in and there's a fly ball in the left field. Monty Irvin moving back. is under it now. He has it for up number two. Antonelli pulled the string on work. Gave him a change up. 
He hit it to the opposite field. Fly ball to Monty Irvin. That brings up Wally Wetchley. A single in the first inning. He walked in the third. Right hand batter. Indian teammates call him the beast. He's powerfully built. First pitch is a fastball. Blaze through the middle. Strike one called. Throws in on first with two out in the first half of the fifth inning. Strike one to count. Rosen takes a short lead. Next pitch is wide of the plate. Ball one. One and one. The count is even up. Batter on deck is George Strickland. Antonelli tugging at his cap, nodding vigorously to his catcher, Wes Westrom, on the sign. A one and one pitch. Hit foul down the third baseline. Strike two. This been fielded by Tony Cuccinello. Ball one and strike two, the count on the batter. The Indians leading by a score of one to nothing as a result of Al Smith's home run. And an Ellie checks the runner. The next pitch is low into the dirt. Bounced up and hit Westlake. Rosen holding it first. The count is now even, ball two and strike two. Rosen will not take any chances on the bases. Not with that leg, which is still a little lame. It's a matter of a torn muscle in the thigh. Turn to count. Antonelli now steps onto the rubber. Outfielders deep and around toward left. The two two pitch. Ball three. Over but too low with a curveball, and the string is out. Full count of three and two. And now with two out, Rosen will be on the move. Whitey Lockman, with the right-hand batter up, moves to first base to hold him. Westlake single in the first inning was into center field, right through the middle. It's in the third. Three and two count. Take off on the sign. Antonelli, okay on the next. The preacher pitch, a swing and a miss. He struck him out. Strikeout number five for Johnny Antonelli. Boy, this is a real humdinger. Westlake. Goes down swinging, and for the Indians in the fifth. No runs, one hit, one man left. And going into the last half of the fifth inning, the score is Cleveland 1, New York nothing. Say, when it's hard to get rolling in the morning, there's nothing like a clean, refreshing shave with shaving cream and a Gillette Super Speed Razor to shift you into high gear. Those look good, feel great shaves really come easy with this wonderfully convenient razor. Twist the handle and the razor opens. Hook on a blade, twist again, and you're all set. To clean both razor and blade, simply rinse under the tap. What do you say? How about enjoying the comfort and convenience of the modern Gillette Super Speed? Including blue blade dispenser and travel case, it's only a dollar. And with it, you get the new Gillette World Series record book free. Last year's edition went before we knew it. This year's enlarged book is going even faster. So you better hurry. And now, fans, here at the Polo Grounds in New York, the second game of the 1954 World Series going into the last half of the fifth inning. The score, Cleveland 1, New York Giants nothing. And now, to take over and carry on the rest of this broadcast, here is Mitchell's Al Helper. Al, come in. All right, Jimmy, one down in the series, and with a score one to nothing right now in favor of the Indians. They're trying to even it up and hold their perfect World Series record. You know, they've uh, won two World Series, they've lost none. Well, let's see what happens. Old man Tuff is out on the mound for the Cleveland Indians this afternoon. Early win. He's pitching on to Willie May. Comes in with an overhand fastball, and Willie, who is over one, leans back and takes that fastball off the shoulder for ball one. Willie Mays came up in the second inning, sent a fly ball to right field. It was gathered in by Wally Westlake. And in the fairness of reporting, we should tell you that the Giants have had no base runners in this one so far. There's a curveball. Willie partially swung on, and enough to have it called a strike against him. One ball and one strike on Willie Mays, who is 0 for 4 in series play so far this year. He went 0 for 3 yesterday, he's 0 for 1 this afternoon. Early win, the old McComas right handed delivers a pitch high, but almost gets away from Hegan. That'll be ball to Willie Mays. That's where this win has really been mowing him down. It isn't that Johnny Antonelli 
isn't pitching a good ball game. He is. He's pitching a fine ball game, but early win just happens to be pitching one a little bit better. Win the barrel-chested right-hander, Cleveland. Very serious face fellow takes his sign from Hagan. Looks down at Willie Mays, the right-hander. Pitches to him, the fastball right under the chin. That's ball three. Three balls and one strike. It's a one to nothing ball game in favor of the Cleveland Indians. They have one run, five hits off Johnny Antonelli. One of the five hits was the first pitch ball. Al Smith tagged it over the left field wall for a home run. A lot of curve ball to Mays is outside for ball four, and there's the first man to get on base for the New York Giants this afternoon. The first base on balls to be given up by early win. Now, everybody, I don't know whether this will have anything to do with the record book or not, and I doubt whether we could find it. But uh, I'm almost sure it might be. On two successive pitch balls by two different pitchers, two home runs were the results. If you'll go back to yesterday's ball game, the first pitch ball, Dusty Rhodes hit it into the uh, right field stands for a three-run home run to win the ball game for the Giants. And today, Al Smith stepped up and teed off on the first pitch hit by, uh, thrown by Johnny Antonelli, hit it over the left field pavilion roof for a home run. Here's Hank Thompson up now. He's 0 for 1, a fly to left field in the second inning. Takes the first pitch and tie for ball one. Willie Mays, the only base runner. He has the only stolen base in the series so far. Stole yesterday, if you recall. He's on at first. Wirtz holds the inside corner. Wind checks him. Now the 1 and 0 pitch to the plate. Down it comes. Thompson backs off and takes the fastball over the inside corner off the hands for a called strike. Hank Thompson is one for four, batting at 250 right now in the entire uh, World Series play so far. He had one for three yesterday to post a batting average of 333 at the start of the ball game. Thompson standing deep at the plate, holds that bat way down with the knob. The little fella swings and gets a lot of power in it. Wynn checks his runner, Willie Mays, breaks back off the mound and bluffs Willie back into first base. The outfield for Thompson is fanned around the right and they're playing deep, particularly Wally Westlake in right field. He's playing back very deep, back to the cinder track here at the Polo Grounds. As the sun breaks out again. Wind pitches. An overhand curveball. It's inside. That's ball two. Two balls, one strike on Hank Thompson. Herman Franks down behind third, putting on the sign for Thompson and for the base runner, Willie Mays. This is the first opportunity the Giants have had. And a man on the bases. And we'll see how carefully early wind pitches here with a man on. Bobby Avila deep in the hole between first and second with this left-hand hitter up there. Al Rosen playing a shallow third. Time is called for the moment while uh, Hank Thompson steps away from the plate to rest the perspiration from his hands. A lot of it here this afternoon, too, because it's warm and it's humid. Full of a misty haze hanging over the polo grounds. Wins ready, delivers. Fastball, turn on, there's a line drive, hit the right field. It's in there for the base hit. There goes Willie Mays, galloping past second. He's on his way to third. Westlake throws to second to Avila for the holdup ball. Thompson at first. Inning. Finally, the Giants dent the pitching of early win. They get the first base hit off him. Runners at first and third, and Dusty Rhodes is coming up to the plate. The guy who sent that home run into the right field stands yesterday on the first pitch in the tenth inning. Rhodes is batting for Monty Irvin. There's the announcement for him. Who's the undoing of Bob Lemon, who pitched a very brilliant ball game here for Cleveland yesterday? He was the undoing of Bob Lemon, and he's being sent up against early win here this afternoon. The tying run for the Giants on at third base. It's one to nothing ball game. Winner at first, second is open, nobody out, and early win is in trouble. Dusty Rhodes coming up to the plate, batting 1,000 in the series. First pitch to him, the left-hand hitter swings on it. There's a high foul ball hit off the first base line. Woods coming over, I doubt he can get to it. He can't. It's into the stands, out of play. Dusty Rhodes, who cuffed the first pitch yesterday, into the right field stands in the bottom of the tenth inning with two men aboard to give the Giants a 5 to 2 surprising win here at the Polo Ground. And it's he being called upon again by the county manager, Leo DeRocher, to see what he can do about facing early wins. Willie Mays playing it very safely at uh, third base, not taking much of a lead. Hank Thompson holding glued pretty much to first with Wirtz on the inside corner. Outfield around the right, needless to say, playing deep. Early win ready. Delivers a fastball, and right down into the dirt goes Dusty Rhodes. That ball flips in off the skip of the cap. One ball and one strike to count on Rhodes. 
Boy, you got the fans buzzing here at the Polo Grounds now. Dusty Rhodes digging in. He's a big fella. Left hand hitter. Stands just off the plate. Holds that bat way down with the knob. Now win is set. Checks his runners. Delivers one and one to the plate. A fastball swung on a miss for a strike. Dusty was really after it, and there was no question at all what he had in the back of his mind. One ball, two strikes on Dusty Rhodes. Last half of inning number five. The Giants with runners at first and third as they finally cracked into early win service. Win walked Mays. Mays then going all the way around to third when Hank Thompson rifled a single in the right field. Rosen bluffing over to third to keep Willie Mays close as Win steps up on the rubber. The count on Dusty Rhodes, pinch batting for Monty Irvin, is one ball and two strikes. Will history repeat itself? Let's see. Wynn settles down into position, hesitates. Rares back, delivers the plate, Rhodes swings, there's a high foul ball. Hit back to the screen. That's out of play. The count remains one ball and two strikes. As we said a few minutes ago, despite the fact the sun is now out, here at the polo grounds, there's sort of a murky haze hanging over the city of New York. It makes it particularly difficult... When the sun is gone, you see the ball too well. Of course, as Jimmy told you, the lights can be turned on in World Series play at any time. Now win is set. Runners at first and third. Nobody out. In comes the pitch. Road swings. Hits a pop fly into center field. Doby's going to have to hurry. He comes on. He can't get to it. It's in there for the base hit. Willie Mays comes in. There's the throw to third. Thompson slides. He's safe. Rose and throws back to Avila. And Rose gets down to second on the throw in. Dusty Rhodes, who batted in three runs yesterday for the New York Giants, has just batted one in today. So that'll give him four runs batted in. That ties up the ball game here in the last half of the fifth inning. Willie Mays coming in to score from third base easily. And down in the bullpen very quickly for the Cleveland Indians, Don Mossy, the left-hander, and Ray Norleski, the right-hander, jump up and start to get heated up. So Rhodes is on at second base, taking second on the throw in, which tried to catch Thompson as he moved over on that dunk single in the second fin to uh, center field, moved all the way around from second on into third base. And 47 times at bat as a pinch hitter, Dusty Rhodes now has delivered 17 times this year. That means a uh, percentage of about 360. That's pretty tough. David Williams up there now with the infield drawn in tight, takes the first pitch from early win, fired in there high for ball one. All locked up here at one apiece. The New York Giants and the Cleveland Indians. They've got the hammers out and they're going this afternoon. Runners at second and third. First is open. The Cleveland infield is drawn in tight. Early win with his back against the wall. Rares back delivers to Davy Williams. The pitch is swung on. There's a high foul ball hit off the first base line. Vic Wirtz digging over to the stands. He cannot get it. It's unplayable. Way back into the crowd. One ball and one strike is the count on Davy Williams. Here in the last half of the fifth inning, the Giants have scored one time to tie it up. They've gotten only two hits off early win, and uh, both of the hits having come here in the last half of inning number five. Mays, who was walked, brings back to mind that old adage to walk the first man in an inning is fatal. Wynn delivers the plate now to Williams. It's a fastball high. It's ball two, two balls and one strike. Young Davy almost went for that pitch. Wynn out there perspiring, trying to dry his hand. There's Hank Thompson stepping down off third. Dusty Rhodes moves off second. Wynn pitches the plate. It's a fast tight curve inside for ball three. Three balls, one strike to count on Davey Williams, batting number seven in the Giants' order. Williams has been up once today, came up in the third inning and struck out. One of the three strikeouts spun here this afternoon by the Cleveland right-hander. Thompson hugging very close to third with Rosen very close to hold him on. The pitch to the plate to Williams is swung on and foul tip. So he had the green light on the 3-1 pitch. It's now 3-2. Pitch swung right on and fouled right back into the mask of Jim Higgin. Wynn takes his cap off on the mound. Rises for it. Steps up, kicks dirt. Scrapes his cleats along the pitcher's rubber. Enfield still playing up tight. Now the pitch to the plate on the 3-2 count. Williams swings. There's a high foul ball coming right up over our Gillette microphones. I don't think anyone's going to get to that one. Three and two remaining is the count on young Davy Williams. 
with first base open. Nobody out. Giant runners at second and third. Dusty Rhodes coming in as a pinch batter for Monty Irvin, dumping a Texas leaguer in the center field to drive in the tying run. Give him four runs batted into the series of the six that have been hit in by the Giants. Wind delivers three and two. The fastball is over for called strike three. So Williams goes out of there. And early win. Hangs up strikeout number four. Coming up to the plate now is Wes Westrom. He's two for five in World Series play. And in this ball game, he's over for one. Came up in the third inning, hit a ball well, but hit it out into left field where Al Smith was able to range off to his left and make the catch. Time has been called for the moment. While Al Rosen talks to his pitcher, Early Wynn, he turns and uh, cuts back toward third base. The situation here in the last half of the fifth inning, one out for the Giants. Hank Thompson is on at third. Dusty Rhodes, who batted for Monty Irvin and delivered a pinch single to drive in the tying run, is on at second, and first base is open. And West Western up there. The first pitch to West is high and outside. Fastball that almost got away from Hagan. One ball and no strikes. All locked up at one and one. Wouldn't you know it? Well, they said there was going to be a lot of excitement in the 1954 World Series when the Giants and the Indians got together. And by George, we've had it. One ball, no strike count on West Westrom, right-hand hitter. In comes the next pitch. Fastball laid in there about face high for ball two. Wynn has gone to the fastball on occasions, and particularly so on West Westrom. Westrom steps back. Moves right back up to the plate now, and Diggsy spikes in. Infield playing up tight, hoping to get a chance to cut the run off the plate. Wynn delivers a let-up curve. It's also high, and that's ball three. Three and nothing to West Westrom. Here in the last half of any number five, one out and two on. Ball game tied at one apiece. And they're going to put him on now. There's ball four way on the outside, and that means that Johnny Antonelli will be coming up. He or a pinch batter. And uh, while we see who is coming up, let's pause here ten seconds for station identification. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. This is WGN, your World Series station, Chicago. Dorosha sending up his good hitting pitcher, Johnny Antonelli. I think Jimmy uh, Dudley told you earlier in the broadcast that Antonelli had poked a pair of home runs into the right field stands here at the polo ground, so they're going to give him a chance to bat for himself here with the bases loaded and one out. Score is one apiece here between Cleveland and the New York Giants. Thompson is on at third, Rhodes at second, and Westrom is on at first. So more than definitely now, early win has his work cut out for him. Etched right up on the wall in big letters. Wind delivers, Antonelli hitting left-handed takes a curve outside for ball one. Freddy Fitzsimmons wiggling his fingers down at first base. Trying to get the attention of uh, base runners. Infield has moved back to double play depth now, particularly the keystone combination. Wind delivers, curveball swung on by Antonelli and missed for a strike. It was broken right off the fists on the inside corner. One ball, one strike on Johnny Antonelli. Johnny came up in the second inning, sent a pretty good fly ball to right field, and Westlake went off to his right to capture it. That retired to side in the third. Antonelli standing just off the plate, almost straight up and down. Now leans over. Wind throws him the fastball, and it swung on, hit down to the right side. Bobby Avila up with a ghost of Strickland for one out of second. The throw to first is running time. Run comes in the score. Johnny Antonelli gets the run batted in, and the Giants now lead 2-1. Two to one. Coming in from third base to score on the force out at second, Hank Thompson. And the force out at second. Caught West Western sliding in. The ball went from Avila, who picked up very nicely, fired back to Strickland. Throw on the first base, not in time, and Dusty Rhodes, of course, ankled right over and took possession of third. So the Giants have runners at first and third. Second is open. And up is Whitey Lockman, the leadoff man of the New York Giants. Two to one now in favor of New York. Wind delivers a curve. Whitey Lockman swings, hits it just outside of first base foul on the ground. Ball strike one. One of the finest slides we've seen in a long time was Westrom flicking his feet into second base there to try to keep Strickland from firing that ball on over to first to get Antonelli on a twin killing. Sky Dusty Rhodes has done all right so far for the Giants in the pinch hitting department getting two. There's a pitch to the plate to Lockman low. Down on Whitey is one and one. 
If memory serves me rightly... Well, wait a minute. I don't have to depend on the memory. Let's go to that little Gillette record book here and see. That's right. Brown has three pinch hit. It's in the World Series. Mm-hmm. So uh, Dusty Rhodes is just uh, one shy of that. Dr. Bobby Brown. There's a fastball. The Whitey Lockman swung on. Hit down to Vic Wirtz, who has the ball handcuffed him. He picks up, throws over to early win, covering in time for the putout. There's a nice play by Vic Wirtz on the recovery. He had that ball completely handcuffed him, and early win playing heads up baseball was over to cover. Vic Wirtz picked that ball up and flipped it backhanded to early win in time to get the put out at first base. Whitey Lockman almost hit that ball through Vic. So that's all here for the New York Giants in the last half of the fifth inning. A 3 1 put out. On Whitey Lockman to retire the side. However, the Giants come up with a pair of runs to go ahead. Two runs on two base hits. There was one walk in there. There were two men left on, and there were no errors. So the score at the end of five full innings of play now. The New York Giants, two, and the Cleveland Indians, one. Well, it's really one for the books. What a quick, easy shaving cream shave with the Gillette razor can do for you. It makes you look your up-and-coming best and feel great right off. Try today's handy one-piece Gillette and see. Well, here at the end of five innings at the polo grounds, it means that the ground keepers come out and sort of manicure the infield, get it all set for the remainder of the ball game. And it gives us an opportunity here of uh, taking a look at the totals. Right now, for the New York Giants, they have a total of two runs on two base hits. They have committed no errors, and so far they have stranded just two men. For the Cleveland Indians, coming up with one run, they have five hits off Johnny Antonelli, who will now be the front-running pitcher. And as far as errors are concerned, the Indians have none. And in the left-on-bases department, they have eight. They stranded three in the first inning, one in the second, stranded two in the third, one in the fourth, and one in the fifth for a total of eight. Now, let's see, they had 13 yesterday, and they have stranded eight today for a total of 21. They've stranded 21 men on the bases so far. Yesterday, the Giants had nine, and they have two today, so that's just 11. Just about half as many as the Indians have left on the bases. So it might uh, we might find that the record will be challenged in uh, the left-on-bases department ere this World Series has reached its conclusion. Johnny Antonelli goes back to the mound now, and here in the top half of the sixth inning, he'll pitch to the last third of the batting order of the Cleveland Indians. George Strickland will be the first man up, then will come Hagan and early win. George Strickland has been up twice in the second game, and he has gone 0 for 2. In the first inning, he was out number three, popping up and out to the first baseman, Whitey Lockman. Came along then in the third inning and retired to side, forcing out Wally Westlake at second on a play that went from Alvin Dark to Davey Williams. So it's Strickland coming up first here in the top of the sixth inning, followed by Hegan, who has one of the five hits given up by Johnny Antonelli and has the one of the two extra base blows given up by the left-hander. Won a home run by Al Smith leading off in the ball game, and then Jim, Jim Hegan led off in the second inning, doubled, and died at third base after Wynn had sacrificed him there when Smith struck out and Avila fouled out to third baseman Thompson. So we move to the top of the sixth inning. Here's Strickland standing in. He's 0 for 5 in the series, 0 for 2 this afternoon. Let up curveball is over to a right-hand hitter for a strike one call. Antonelli now, for the first time this afternoon, is out in front. Starts his motion, kicks and throws a fastball. It's poured in there about shoulder high. And misses a little outside for ball one. One ball and one strike on George Strickland. It's good field and shortstop, this Strickland. Many times it's been said if he could hit just a little bit more, he'd be a terrific guy. There's a curveball. It's lit up on the outside corner, shoulder high for ball two. Two balls and one strike. I know uh, Jim was telling me before the ball game yesterday, he said one thing about it. This guy Strickland has meant an awful lot to the Cleveland infield. I've watched him all year long, and he's really been a spark plug. The 2 1 pitch, a fastball to Strickland at the knees, good for strike two call. Of course, you can't uh, overlook the work of Sam Denty at shortstop for Cleveland when George Strickland was forced out with his broken jaw. Kid played with a broken finger, did a nice job for him. Fastball to Strickland, over at the knees for called strike three. So Strickland is out of there as Antonelli wheels up strikeout number six. He had 140 strike, 48 strikeouts on the regular year and has now come up with um, six here in this World Series game. Antonelli will face Jim Hegan now. Jim doubled in the second inning, doubled the left field, came along in the fourth inning and fly to center field to Willie Mays. 
Antonelli works to him. The big right-hand hitter takes a fastball. Ford through under the letters for called strike one. Here's a kid this year has shown that uh, often he will start shakily and did in the 39 games he pitched for the Giants. But seems to warm to his task and get even stronger as he goes along. That's characteristic also of early wind. Early had a weakening spot in the fifth inning. The Giants were able to pick up a pair of runs to lead him now two to one. Pitch is swung on by Higgin. There's a line drive hit out into right field. Don Mueller's got this one played just right. And he's got it for out number two. So Higgin lines to Don Mueller and right for the second out in the sixth. And that'll bring on early win. And early's coming up. It's a nice round of applause from the folks here at the polo ground. This guy's a good pitcher. Early win, a switch hitter, batting right-handed against the left-handed pitching of John Antonelli. Has sacrificed successfully. That sacrifice came in the second inning when he moved Jim Hegan down to third base. Came along in the fourth and struck out. Antonelli pours the first pitch to win. It's a fastball that shades off outside for ball one. A lazy breeze blowing in from behind right field here this afternoon. It's not going to help or hurt the fly balls too much. That sun keeps playing hide and seek. It's out right now. Antonelli comes in with an overhand fastball and wins swings and misses. One ball, one strike on early win. Two down for Cleveland here in the top of the sixth inning. Antonelli trying to pace himself takes plenty of time as he takes his sign from Westrum. Now West pops him in as a target. Antonelli delivers a big let-up curveball. It's swung on. Hit off the end of the bat. Trickles foul up the first baseline where Red Crest, coaching there for the Indians, picks it up and throws it out of play. So the count hangs right on for early win at one ball and two strikes. With the bases empty and two down in the beginning of the sixth inning. Wynn measures off at the plate. Beats the meat end of the bat down on the rubber of home plate. Puts that bat back on his shoulder. Whips it around a couple of times. In the meantime, Johnny Antonelli tugs at his cap, kicks dirt out of his spikes. Westrom has the sign all ready for him, and now we're ready to go. Antonelli pumps once, twice. Rares back and delivers. Fastball inside off the hips. That's ball two. Two balls and two strikes. Played umpire, Charlie Berry. Standing right behind uh, catcher Westrom, waiting for the next pitch. Chuck O'Conlon is at first. Johnny Stevens at second, and Al Barlick is down at third. Lon Warnicke down the left field line, and Larry Knapp down the right field line. The five men in blue. Now Antonelli comes in 2 2. Plate swung on. There's a high foul ball hit right up over our mutual microphones up into the second tier. Two balls and two strikes. Down, holding right on for early win. And right now he looks as though someone has taken a water bucket and poured its entire contents right down his neck. It's hot here this afternoon. The humidity is what has done it. And when that sun comes out and starts to boil that mist, it gets hot down on that field. It must be because I know it's hot up here. The two and two count for early win. Two down, nobody on top of the six. Two to one in favor of the Giants. Antonelli delivers a slow curve and Wynn punches it. There's a drive going into left field. It might be in there. It's up against the boards for perhaps extra bases. There goes early Wynn digging for second. He hauls up at second with a stand-up two-bagger. That almost got into the left field stance for a home run. Almost. Lines up as a double for early Wynn. And now he himself represents the tying run for Cleveland at second base if Al Smith is able to do something about it. There's hit number six of Antonelli. And I could well imagine it would be sweet music to the ears of early win if the ring of the bat by Al Smith would denote a base hit. As Wynn, who isn't the fastest man on the Cleveland Indian squad by a long sight, but still can move, is in scoring position. Should Al Smith come through? Smith has had one base hit. That was his home run opening the ball game. He struck out in second, walked in the fourth. And he himself was forced out. At second base on a spectacular play by Thompson. Smith, a choke hitter, batting right-handed, moves up. Down the bullpen, we've got double-barreled activity for the Giants as the first pitch is made by Antonelli low into the dirt for ball one. John McCall, the left-hander, 
And the right-hander is... We've got two left-handers down there. John McCall... Oh, wait a minute, that's Hoyt Wilhelm. That's right. Hoyt Wilhelm, the right-hander, and John McCall, the left-hander. So Leo has a pair on tap. Antonelli looks back over his left shoulder at second base to check. See where early win is playing. Then delivers a curve way inside, right down to the shins. That's ball two on Al Smith. So Antonelli's got himself some scratching trouble here. Early win almost tagged him for a home run. The ball hit high on the left field wall up over the 315-foot sign. Dusty Rhodes, who went into left field after he'd batted for Irwin, went high on the wall and couldn't do it. Got away from him. Willie Mays had to make the play finally. Now Antonelli sets. Delivers to the plate. Smith takes a medium-speed fastball through there for a strike, and the count is 2-1. Picket line for the Giants, Rhodes in left. Willie Mason centered on Mueller in right. You recall it was Rhodes who came in in the fifth inning, pinch hit the single, and then he stayed right on for Monty Irvin. The rest of the lineup remains the same. Antonelli ready to go now to Al Smith. Checks his runner at second. That's early win, taking a pretty good size lead. Throws a sidearm fastball over. It's called strike two. Two balls, two strikes. A count on Al Smith. Two down, one on. The tying run. Early win is on at second base. Two to one ball game. Favor the Giants here as we move along in the top of the sixth inning. The wind's whipping up a little bit more from behind right field now, blowing sort of catty cornered across the playing field, not behind left. Antonelli has the count of two and two with Al Smith. Two down for the Indians in the top of the sixth and early win in scoring position at second. And just as Antonelli gets ready to pitch, Smith backs out. Now he's back in and ready to go. Antonelli again, the check of the runner, delivers the plate, a let-up curveball, swung on, and dribbled up the third baseline foul. Two balls, two strikes on Smith. Yesterday's ball game certainly was a thriller. Most everywhere he went last night, you heard folks talking about it. My goodness, what a lot of action, huh? Well, they've come right back here this afternoon and provided more of the same. Cleveland making their bid right now to tie up this ball game, and well, they might. Wynn takes his lead at second. Antonelli checks him, then delivers to the plate 2 2. The pitch is swung on and popped up off the first baseline in foul territory. Here comes Waddy Lockman digging over. He's under it, and he's got it. So that's all for the Cleveland threat here in the sixth inning. Al Smith fouling up and out to first baseman Waddy Lockman to retire the side. No runs. There was one base hit. There were no errors. One man was left on. That's the ninth man to be left on here by the Indians and going to bat six times. Well, the score at the end of five and one half innings, the second game of the 54 World Series. It's the New York Giants two and the Cleveland Indians one. Well, tomorrow, as you know, the series moves to Municipal Stadium in Cleveland. They call it the perfect part. The right field and left field lines are exactly the same length. Well, look the layout over in the Gillette World Series record book. This great little book has the diagrams of every park in the majors complete. This new edition is jam-packed with baseball lowdown. Diagrams of all parks, scoring instructions, all-time records, this year's player rosters, basic rules, and plenty more for baseball fun from now on. Have you got yours? No? Well, then you'd better be sure to get this 112-page fact-filled pocketbook in time for tomorrow's game. Buy a Gillette Super Speed Razor set for just $1, the regular price. Your free copy is attached. Better get going, though, because flies are running mighty low. The last half of inning number six. The New York Giants leading by one run as the score stands two to one. We'll have Alvin Dark coming up here in the sixth inning. Dark to be followed by Don Mueller and then by Willie Mays. If anyone else is needed, Hank Thompson will be up there again to swing the lumber. Early win goes back to the mound for Cleveland. And let's check them defensively for you. It's early win on the mound behind the plate, Jim Hagan. At first base, Victor Wirtz. At second, Bobby Avila. The shortstop is George Strickland. At third is Al Rosen. Out in left field, Al Smith. The center fielder, Larry Doby. And in right field, Wally Westlake. Early win, throwing a few pitches down to get the field of the mound. He stood out on second base for quite some time before the third and final out was made in the top of the sixth inning. So he's uh, thrown his court and he's ready. <coughs> Stepping up to the plate now, Alvin Dark. 
He's gone over two this afternoon. He's two for six in series play. Hitting slightly over uh, 300. Now when is ready, pumps twice and throws. Curveball swung on and hit in right field through the hole between first and second for a single. Alvin Ark is on, punching one through the hole between first and second and into right. Well, that gives the Giants their third hit and sets up the situation for Don Mueller. Mueller's gone over two. He bounced out in the first inning to the right side to retire the side. Bobby Avila throwing him out. He retired the side in the fourth with a fly ball to right field. Alvin Dark steps away from first. Beckworth holds a corner on him. Now Wynn checks that runner. Looks down to the plate. Delivers. There goes Dark. The pitch is swung on. The hit and run play. There's a foul ball. Hit off the third baseline. Way up into the second tier. With a loud strike. The Giants playing hit and run with Alvin Dark breaking on the pitch. Down in the bullpen. Don Mossy, the left-hander, and Ray Narleski, the right-hander, both uh, getting warm and ready for Cleveland. Case Wynn should have more trouble here. Dark strides away from first. Wynn checks him, looks down at the plate to Mueller, pitches, and it's swung on. There's a high, lazy foul ball hit off the first baseline. That's going to fade off into the crowd out of play. Strike two on Don Mueller. Wynn dries his hands, rubbing it down along the leg of his uniform. Alvin Dark steps off at first. Wirtz continues to hold the inside corner against him. Wynn ready now after a look at first. Delivers a great big curveball. He gets away from Hagan. And there goes Alvin Dark breaking for second. He's going to get down there pretty easily. So it's going to be a wild pitch. A wild pitch on early win. Alvin Dark taking advantage of it. Moves on down to second. See, in yesterday's ball game, we had one wild pitch uncorked by Bob Lemon. So, uh, two wild pitches, both of them chalked up to Cleveland pitching. One to Lemon, now one to win. That wild pitch has placed Alvin Dark in scoring position here in the last half of the sixth inning with nobody out. Of course, the count is one ball, two strikes now on Don Mueller. Pitch to him, a big curveball. Don swings on it, hits it out into right center field, left center field. Coming over for it is Doby. Makes the grab and fires in quickly to Strickland. The Dark has to hold on at second. So, Mueller flies to Larry Doby, left center. And here's Willie May. Willie Mays has yet to get a base hit in the 1954 World Series. He'll say, hey, kid, has been handcuffed. Of course, he hasn't been handcuffed to uh, Jimmy as far as uh, playing that center pastor defensively, has he? That's for sure, and you can watch this kid. He'll be getting his base hits before many more innings go by, Al. That's for sure. Well, let's see. He's over one today. Five to right in the second inning. Walked in the fifth. Scored the first giant run. And let's see what happens with him right now. Alvin Dark's in scoring position for the Giants at second with one out at the bottom of the sixth inning. Early win. Gets ready. Looks down at Willie Mays. Checks his runner, then delivers the fastball. Mays swings and doesn't get it. Boy, and he spun all the way around. As the boys in the trade would say right now, Willie is base hit hungry. The ball is one strike on Willie. Right-hand hitter standing three quarters deep straightaway stance. Alvin Dark got a pretty good lead there at second base. Outside of the infield playing deep for Mays. Outfield fanned around left and playing very deep for him. Wynn checks his runner. Delivers the fastball. Mays cuts at it again. Doesn't touch it. That's strike two. Mays turns around, shakes his head as if to say to himself, My, what's this Mr. Wynn got? We said the last time Willie was up. Early Wynn has gone to the fastball and pitching to Willie. Pitched in tight both times, and Willie's gone for it. Here's the 0-2 delivery now by Early Wynn. Down it comes. Another fastball. This one swung on a miss for strike three. So that's all. He gets Willie on the fastball. That's the fifth strikeout for Early. That's the second out for the Giants here in the sixth, and still Alvin Dark is on at second. That'll bring on Hank Thompson. Little left-handed hitting third baseman. Fly to left field in the second, hitting an outside pitch, and then drilled one to right field to wrap in a run here this afternoon. Rather to uh, get a man to third, I should have said this afternoon. Zester Rhodes came on to bat the run in. Now win is set. 
delivers. Thompson swings on a let up curveball. One off the shoulder, misses for strike one. Outfield fan drastically around the right. This Thompson uh, has 26 home runs this year in the regular season. Hits uh, the right field stands here pretty well. When ready, checks his runner, delivers the plate. Thompson swings again. This one's a fastball, and he doesn't get it. Nothing in two on Hank Thompson. Alvin Dark still stretching his legs down there at second. Has George Strickland playing almost over behind him now as the overshift is on. That is, they're moving over toward the right field line more. Dark can't take a lead as large as he has been taking. Wind tries a let-up pitch on Thompson. It's high for ball one. One ball, two strikes. Two to one right now in favor of the New York Giants. They're threatening to pick up an insurance run here in the last half of the sixth inning. Alvin Dark, the captain, on at second base. He singled, was wild pitched to second. Bob Mueller was up there, and then he promptly flied to center, and May struck out. Pitch, Thompson swung on. There's a so trickler down the first baseline foul. Quirtz gobbles it up, fires it back to the mound to win. Count holds right on to Hank Thompson. One ball, two strikes. Tomorrow, Gillette's cavalcade of sports moves into Cleveland, the Municipal Stadium, where the World Series will continue. Boy, that's a big ballpark out there. I got plenty of room to roam around. Center fielders probably be bringing their bicycles along with them. Of course, I don't think this maze needs one. This Adobe's a fast man, too. These guys can cover a lot of center field for you. Pitch the plate now to Thompson. Levels his count right off at two and two. Coming a little off the plate. Two balls, two strikes. A count on Thompson. Two down, one on. Last half of the sixth inning. Giants leading two to one. Wind standing out there in the sunlight takes his sign from Hegan. Big thick chested right hander gets set, looks at Dark at second, delivers the plate. The fastball is swung on and popped up. It's off to the right of the plate in foul territory. Hegan says he'll take it, and he does take it. That's all. The Giants are retired here. Thompson fouling up and out to Hegan. And in the sixth inning, no runs. There was one base hit. One man was left on. Dark single, wild pitch to second, and that's where he died. It means that three men have been left on now by the Giants. They're going to bat six times, and they're leaning in the ball game. Sir, that score with New York out in front is two to one. New York two, and the Cleveland Indians one. Sir, I tell you that this series has certainly packed a wallop so far here at the Polo Grounds. Well, you'll get an even bigger bang out of these broadcasts. If you have the Gillette World Series record book to baseball information on every team and player that ever at the regular price, as long as the supply lasts. Now for inning number seven. For the Cleveland Indians, Bobby Avila, followed by Larry Doby and then by Rosen. Bobby Avila came into today's game with one for five, hitting at 200. He's gone over three this afternoon. He's rolled a short. He's fouled out to the third baseman, and he forced Smith. In the fourth inning, when Hank Thompson, on a diving stop of a line shot headed for left field, robbed him of a base hit and came up with a play that was rather sparkling at uh, second base, firing back to Davey Williams. So Bobby Avila comes up now looking for his first base hit this afternoon. He is one for eight. So that means he's hitting a little over 200. The attendance here this afternoon has just been announced at 49,000. And 99, 49,099. First pitch to Avila. Antonelli cuts it loose, fires the fastball under the chin for ball one. Well, we had 52,751 yesterday and the two-day total here at the Polo Grounds. 101,850. Antonelli gets set now. Comes in with a 1-0 pitch and Avila takes it right through there for a strike. One ball, one strike on Avila. Leading off here in the seventh inning with the Indians behind 2-1. Antonelli pumps once Kicks and throws A let-up pitch swung on by Avila And drilled foul down the left field line Up against the wall So for Bobby, his count is one and two This boy's been quite a second baseman this year For the Cleveland Indians Good man, a double play combination Good hitter 
came up with the American League batting crown this year. And I know uh, several occasions we were out of Cleveland this year, Bobby was the difference. Sparkling play defensively and offensively. Antonelli comes in one and two to Avila with the fastball, and it's high outside for ball two. Two balls, two strikes. First man up for the Indians in the seventh, Bobby Avila. Antonelli has given up six base hits to the Cleveland Indians. Early win has given up only three, and he's behind. Fastball to Avila, misses outside for ball three. So it's a 3-2 count. Antonelli turning his back on Avila, moves over, goes to the rosin bag. Now Johnny, after having dried his hand across his uniform blouse, goes down for the rosin bag, steps up there to take the sign out from his battery mate, Wes Westrom. Getting ready to fire the 3-2 pitch in here to Bobby Avila. Outfield playing straight away and not too deep, although Avila can hit the long ball. He pitches to him low for ball four. So there's the tying run for Cleveland on here in the top of the seventh inning. That's the fifth base on balls given up by Antonelli. And before uh, we have the next batter up there, Larry Doby, let's pause ten seconds for station identification. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. And this is your exclusive World Series station in Chicago, WGN. Well, let's see here. With Larry Doby coming up to the plate, we can go back to the fifth inning. When early win walked the first man in the inning, and it was fatal to him. Let's see if history is going to repeat itself in this particular case. Bobby Avila, very fleet of foot on the bases. Larry Doby takes the first pitch from Antonelli, a side-on fastball. It's inside for ball one. Larry Doby is a pretty good hit and run man, and with Avila on, it's figured that uh, they may be gone. Doby is a pretty good hit and run man, and with Avila on, it's figured that uh, they may be gone. And time is called. Rocha comes out and talks to talk to Johnny Antonelli. Now, very rarely does uh, Leo DeRocha lift a pitcher. He usually comes out and imparts words of wisdom. Ordinarily, when um, Freddie Fitzsimmons comes out, you'll have a change of pitchers, but uh, not, not so many times with Leo DeRocha. However, down in the bullpen, he's got uh, left-hander Wendy McCall ready, along with uh, right-hander Hoyt Wilhelm. Walks past Johnny Antonelli, says something to him. DeRocha kicked and dirt out at the pitcher's mound. He's got to make his mind up. He has the first guess, and that's the only one he's got. Just the same as manager Lopez has the first guess with Cleveland, and that's the one that has to stick. That's what makes a manager's job in baseball particularly difficult, because uh, he doesn't get a chance to second-guess himself. Now the umpires come over and say, boys, uh, don't you think we ought to keep the old ball game going? And they say, yes, sir, we believe so. So Leo DeRocher comes stopping back behind the plate with his catcher, Westrom, and Johnny Antonelli is going to stay in the ball game. So DeRosha comes on over to the giant bench. Western back behind the plate. Larry Doby steps in. He has the count of one ball, no strikes. We're in the top of the seventh inning. Bobby Avila, having been walked, is on at first. Whitey Lockman, with a left-hand hitter up there, is partway back to his fielding depth behind first. He's not holding Avila on too closely. Now Antonelli ready. Delivers an overhand fastball. Forward in there under the knees. That's ball two. Johnny Antonelli, realizing that the tying run is at first base, seems to be pressing a little bit right now as he's pitching to Larry Doby. Here's a guy that led the Cleveland Indians and the American League in RBIs. Hit that long ball for you, but definitely. Antonelli throws, let a fastball, swung on, and hit down to Waddy Lockman. It bounces off his chest, he picks it up, he's only players to step on first base to get Larry Doby, who slides in there and is out. In doing so, Bobby Avila, the tying run moves down to second. Doby gave that to college try. He was going to try to get in there and even slid to try to make it. So Doby is out to Whitey Lockman, unassisted. The ball had almost had uh, Whitey completely handcuffed. Bobby Avila, who can really streak, is over at second. And he's representing the tying run now for Cleveland in this 2-1 ball game. Now Rosen comes up. He's had one hit this afternoon in uh, two official times. He walked in the first, rolled out to short in the third, and singled to right in the fifth. Fred Kress implores him to get on. See what happens. Here's a guy that can really hit that ball, snap it with his wrist. He proved that in the All-Star game when he poked a tremendous home run. Takes the first pitch, laid through there for a strike. Antonelli went to the fastball. First half of the seventh inning. Tying run at second for Cleveland. Two to one ball game, favor the Giants. Johnny Antonelli knows he's got trouble now. 
Checks his runner back at second. That's Avila. Comes in with an overhand fastball. At the knees, good for a strike. Nothing in two. The count on Flip Rosen. Now playing in this series with a bad five. Doby has been bunged up a little bit, too. Rosen beats the meat end of the bat down on home plate. Chokes up slightly on the handle, gets his feet set well, pulls his trousers up. He wants to be in position to get going as much as he can. Count is no balls, two strikes on him. Johnny Antonelli, the giant pitcher, taking plenty of time by pitching to Rosen. Realizes that uh, Flipper's a tough customer. Now Antonelli sets, delivers the plate, Rosen swings, hits a bounding ball right back to the mound, and they have Avila trapped off. He's moving off to second to third base now. Hank Thompson trying to run him down, has to flip back to Davey Williams, who tags him out, and Rosen is on at first. So that play goes from the pitcher to the third baseman to the second baseman. Bobby Avila was trapped off. So the fielder's choice on the play puts Rosen on at first base. John Antonelli tossing over to Hank Thompson, who flipped back to Davey Williams for the rundown. Well, that's the second out. And it's doubly important as far as the Giants are concerned because a real fast man has been taken off the bases now, and Rosen, who isn't as fast as Avila and still is slowed down even more by the fact he has a pulled thigh muscle, has been moved back, actually, a base, and he's on at first. But the tying run is still on for Cleveland here in the seventh with two down. And up to the plate comes Victor Wirtz, who was the hero of yesterday's ball game as far as Cleveland was concerned. Vic today is hitting right this minute at 7-14. Antonelli, realizing a tough man's up there, delivers a pass ball and gets it in there over the fist. Good first strike. Wirtz walked in the first inning, single to center in the third, and flied the left in the fifth. Of the three runs batted in, for Cleveland, Victor Wirtz has two of them. He got them yesterday. Rosen with a slight lead at first base. Whitey Lockman back to his fielding depth, but partially back to it with a left-hand hitter up there. In comes the pitch. Wirtz after it hits a foul off the handle of the bat. It scoots back to the screen for strike two. Time is called for the moment while Westrom gets the ball out to the mound. West steps out in front of the plate and shouts something out to Johnny Antonelli. Left-hander grind that ball around in the palms of his hands. As Westrom smooths out dirt at home plate, and Victor Wirtz steps back in with his overly closed stance. Rosen about to take his lead off at first base. There are two down for the Indians here in the top half. Of any number seven, a two-to-one ball game in favor of the Giants. They won yesterday's ball game. They're bidding for the second one here. Antonelli checks his runner. Delivers to the plate, and Wirtz takes high, right up for the cap. Vic sort of fell back from that one, went down on one hand, just to make sure he was far enough away from it. Count on Vic, one ball, two strikes. Still, the two pitchers are throwing down in the giant bullpen, John McCall and Hoyt Wilhelm. Now, Antonelli wheels in the one-two delivery. Vic Wirtz takes it. It's just inside by Shea. Two balls, two strikes. Vic had to have a pretty good eye to take that one. Charlie Barry, right over the shoulder of Westrom, called it immediately. Two balls, two strikes. The tempo of the game here has slowed down considerably. Probably the humidity and the heat has had something to do with it. I'll feel around right and deep for Vic Wirtz. He'll clubber that ball for you if you pitch it down the alley for him. Davy Williams playing back on the rim of the right field grass. Alvin Dark just a couple of steps off the off second base on the uh, third base side. Hank Thompson playing almost where Alvin Dark usually plays. And still the complete overshift is not on for Vic Works. Now Antonelli ready with these 2-2 delivery. Two outs, one on here in the seventh inning. Down comes the pitch. Wirtz swings. There's a high foul ball hit off the third base line. That's fading over near the stands. Thompson cannot get it as he charges over for it. It drops into the stands out of play. Two balls, two strikes. The count on Vic Wirtz. He still has his batting life up there. I imagine uh, Jimmy has noticed the same thing I've noticed in the playing of the first two games of this uh, World Series, that everything is being done so very deliberately. Have you noticed that, Jim? 
You certainly do, Al, almost as if the boys want to be uh, overcautious in their work. Sort of as though they were working off a script. Well, let's see what Johnny Antonelli is going to deal off now to Victor Wirtz here in the top of the seventh inning with two outs and Al Rosen at first. He's representing the tying run in this two-one ball game. Giants leading. Antonelli fires away at the plate of sidearm curve. Outside, and that's ball three. Came in with his crossfire and missed it. <coughs> so Al Rosen will be moving down at first base now. Vic Wirtz will be looking this one over well, and Antonelli will be trying to pour it in there. This could be the pitch. One never knows. Johnny straddle of the pitcher's rubber. Monkeys around with his cap. Then nods in agreement to the sign offered by West Western. Rick Wirtz standing just off the plate gets ready. Al Rosen takes his lead. He should be running this time, or probably will be. Yep, there he goes. The pitch is made swung on by Wirtz and hit foul right back to the screen. So Rosen, limping slightly, comes on back to first base. Cock remains on Victor Wirtz at three and two. <coughs> Fred Crest turns and says something to Jocko Conlon, the first base umpire. Something that makes the Irishman break out and smiles. That's about the only place uh, you'll see a smile. Most every other face on the ball, damn it, is serious right now. Now we're set. 3-2 pitch now to Victor Wirtz as the runner breaks. A slow curveball inside and high for ball four. So Antonelli loses Wirtz, and he's got to go to Westlake now. The walk to Wirtz places Al Rosen down to second base. That's base on balls number six given up by Antonelli. He passed 95 in the National League. I think we might have a runner for Al Rosen right now. Looks as though Rudy Regalado is coming in to run for Al Rosen. Yep, he is. Rosen comes out. Regalado goes in to run. If you recall, Al Rosen was on at second base in the first inning and could get no further than third on a single hit by Wally Westlake. Had he uh, been at full strength, he might have been able to score on it, although uh, Willie Mays did throw a fine strike in, as Jimmy told you, from uh, center field into the plate. Regalado's running here in the seventh inning for Rosen. Means we'll have a new third baseman for Cleveland in the last half of the seventh. Wally Westlake up there with runners at first and second, two down. Top and threw it to waste for a strike. Of nine opportunities, Wurtz has had in this series, he's been on base seven times. I guess that's almost par for the course. Regalado leads off at second. Wurtz steps away from first, not being held on with second occupied and two down. Westlake has the count of no balls, one strike. On a count play, Johnny Antonelli wheels around and is about to throw back to second, but there's no one there to cover, and he just bluffed the throw back, and Regalado streaks back in. Two down in the top of the seventh. Cleveland's still alive and kicking here, hoping they'll be able to tie this ball game up, which stands right now two to one in favor of the Giants. Now Antonelli sets. Regalado leads at second. Here comes Antonelli, sold to the plate to Westlake. It's outside, and a bluff throw down to second has Regalado hurrying back. So Westlake's count is one ball and one strike. This is the same Wally Westlake who put in quite a bit of time as a star outfielder with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Westlake picks set through the chest and shoulders. Has a lot of power when he gets a hold of that ball. Antonelli comes in with 1-1. It's a slow curve, a let-up outside for ball two. Wally Westlake was the first Indian this year to hit a home run when the regular season started. Pretty strong wrists and forearms. Antonelli asks Westrom for the sign again and gets it. Two balls, one strike. Count on Westlake. Two down, two on. Antonelli delivers an overhand curve. Westlake swings on it. Hits a bounding ball to short. Dark comes in, picks up. He's through his first base in time to Waddy Lockman, and that's all for Cleveland. Westlake bounces out from short to first to retire the side. And here in the seventh inning for Cleveland, the big threat set up by a walk. To start things off. Does not materialize. No runs. There were no base hits. 
Though no errors and two men were left on. Eleven men have been left on in this ball game this afternoon by Cleveland in going to bat seven times. And the score at the end of six and one half innings of play now remains the New York Giants two and the Cleveland Indians one. <laughs> seventh inning. His early win goes back out. Pitch for the Cleveland Indians. We have a change at third base. Regalado, who came in to run for Al Rosen, has taken over for him at third here in the last half of the seventh inning. Eleven men, as we said, have been left on by Cleveland at least one each inning. They had 13 yesterday. 13 yesterday and 11 today for a total of 24 so far. Johnny Antonelli has Cracked down on 33 of the Cleveland batsmen. Now early win is ready to face Dusty Rhodes, who blooped that single in the center to drive in a run when he came in as a pinch batter in the fifth inning for Marty Irvin. First pitch to the big fellow is a let-up curveball. Swung on a miss for strike one. Early win taking a sign from Hegan. Regalado playing a shallow third. In comes the curveball. Swung on. There's a high foul ball hit off the first baseline. That's going to fade off into the customers out of play. Strike two of the count on Dusty Rhodes. Rhodes has two for two in the series. One for one this afternoon. But both of those hits and pinch hit rolls. Now in a set. Comes in on two with an overhand curveball. It's high up at the cap. That's ball one. One ball and two strikes to Dusty Rhodes. Regalado moves back a step or two at third base. He took over for Al Rosen here in the last half of the seventh inning. The only change in the lineup for Cleveland. Wynn pumps methodically and delivers a fastball upstairs. That was up above the shoulders. Two balls, two strikes to a left-hand hitter. First giant up in the last half of the seventh inning. Two to one ball game in favor of the Giants over Cleveland. And a ball game that can jump either way. Two two pitch by early win. An overhand curve. Swung on. There's a drive deep in the right field. It might be. Yep, there it goes. Over the right field wall and parks the home run. yesterday's home run by Dusty Rhodes was a cheap home run, but I got news for you. This one sure wasn't. Mr. Dudley, that was hit outside of this park. Sir. Oh, that is hit number four, run number three off. Win the Giants lead three. Go on. The pitch to the plate now to Davey Williams. It's high and on the inside for ball one. This Dusty Rhodes is on a personal home run bin. He's got two runs batted in here this afternoon. The second home run of the series, a giant second. Hits to David Williams again high. That's ball two. Well, when you look back on the 1954 World Series, you'll think of Rhodes. Williams after a fast curve. Foul tips it. That's strike one. You know something? Only two extra base hits by the Giants in these two games, and Rhodes has both of them. Both home runs. Early win delivers. Williams takes. There's a fastball outside for ball three. Three balls and one strike. This is delving into the Joint World Series record book here to find out something about home runs. Find out the roof. Jags and Snyder share the record. Four home runs in the World Series. Here's a guy has got a pair of them. 
He's got a chance. Pitch the plate, swung on by Williams. There's a high pop-up out in front of the plate. Hagan says, go away, boys. I got it. And he has. A fine catcher, that Hagan. Williams pops up and out to the catcher in front of the plate, Jim Hagan. Down the bullpen, we've got uh, Narleski and Marcy up throwing again for Cleveland. One out here for the Giants, last half the seventh. The batter coming up is West Westrom. He slides the left and walk in that order. Early win, ready to pitch to him. Starts his motion. Big fella rares back, throws an overhand curve. It's swung on by West. Fouled back for strike one. West seems to like to go for that low curveball a lot down around the knees. Nothing in one. The Giants leading in the ball game, three to one. Dusty Rhodes hitting his second series home run as the leadoff man here in the seventh inning. Weston swings in a fastball and doesn't get it. That's strike two. Rhodes really proud of this one. All the way over the top of the pavilion roof and out of the park. Wind sets on the 0 2 pitch. No balls, two strikes. Comes down to Western with a low curve into the dirt. Western has ball one, strike two now. Last half, the seventh inning. Second game of the World Series. The Polo Grounds in New York City. The Giants are battling. One two pitch by early win. Swing on. There's a long drive deep into left center field. A well hit ball going way back. Back up uh, against the boards. The catch is made by Al Smith, about 415 feet away from home plate. Man, that ball was really giving a long ride. Al Smith had it played just perfectly. So we have two outs here in the seventh inning. That Western's really been uh, clobbering that apple in this series. A round of applause for West, despite the fact he uh, was out on a long fly ball. And here comes Johnny Antonelli up now, and he'll probably get a round of applause also. Yep. Antonelli getting a round of applause. Antonelli hitting left-handed. has gone over 2 this afternoon. He's flat out to right and forced a man in that order. Wind delivers to him, throws the fastball outside and high for ball one. See anything like this dusty road? Seems to be made to order for the strategic moves of one Leo DeRocher. Snapped off curveball, whistles inside off the kneecaps to Antonelli for ball two. Two balls, no strikes. In three appearances by this guy, Rhodes, in this series, he's had three base hits and has driven in five runs. Antonelli strides into a fastball and then takes it high. That's ball three. So of the eight uh, runs batted in by the Giants, Rhodes having five, I guess you'd definitely say he was top uh, man on the totem pole. The three and no pitch to the plate is a fastball laid through for a strike. So Antonelli's count now is three and one. Runs batted in in a single series. Pitch is swung on. There's a high pop fly going into very short right field. Bobby Avila gets back under it and makes the catch to retire the side. So that's all in the seventh inning for the Giants, but they do pick up a home run, which uh, gives them one run here in the seventh inning on that one base hit. There were no errors. Nobody was left. And the score at the end of seven full innings of play now is the New York Giants three, the Cleveland Indians one. Now, let's see, looking into the eighth inning, George Strickland's going to be the first man up. He's going to lead off at the end ends. But do you know what he has done at bat so far in this game? If you're keeping your own scorecard with us, you know that he has gone over three. It's fun and easy to score like a pro. The Gillette World Series record book shows you how to do it. It's free with the one-piece Gillette razor at the regular price. George Strickland, Hagan, and early win or a pinch batter. It's a three-to-one ball game in favor of the New York Giants. They have three runs, and strange enough, only four hits, two of um, one of which has been a home run off early win. And they have committed no errors this afternoon. They did pop up with three yesterday. A pair of home runs in this ball game. Smith for Cleveland leading off in the first inning, and now uh, Dusty Rhodes here in the seventh. 
to boost the total for the Giants to uh, three. Three to one ball game. Stepping into the eighth inning, George Strickland will be out there in a moment. Johnny Antonelli throwing a few warm up pitches down. Looks as though we're going to have a pinch batter, though, for Strickland. Dave Philly. Dave Philly is going to come on the bat for Strickland. There's the announcement for him. Dave Philly from Paris, Texas, the switch hitter, who started yesterday's ball game in right field, is coming on. Dave Philly hit on the season this year 226. And in yesterday's ball game, Philly went um, 0 for 3, so he has no batting percentage as far as this one is concerned. Philly coming on to open the eighth inning for the Cleveland Indians here. They're behind by a pair of runs. Score 3 to 1 in favor of the Giants. We started talking about the RBI in the single series. The record being held, it's being held by, has been held for quite some time by Gary. The first pitch here to the plate is a fastball high. Philly for ball one. That left handed activity out in the bullpen. That'll be Don Mossy, probably. Is that right, Jim? Don Mossy? As Philly swings on the next pitch and hits a foul back to the screen, got us one ball, one strike on him. Left hander Don Mossy in the bullpen for Cleveland, which leads us to believe that the early win will be lifted for a pinch batter. Particularly if uh, either Philly batting now for Strickland should get on or Hegan. Johnny Antonelli slowing down in his delivery, late stages of the ball game. Gets set, comes in now one and one to the pinch batter and delivers his run up curve in there low for ball two. Two balls, one strike. Top of the eighth. Ball club is well in train tonight for Cleveland. Fastball, fired to the plate, is outside by shade and runs Phillies count to three and one. Tomorrow at Municipal Stadium in Cleveland, the let Cavalcade of Sports move the mutual microphone over there, and you may now be with you again from Cleveland for the opening game out there. And all Cleveland is looking forward to it. They'll be coming in for miles around for the 3-1 pitch to the plate to Philly is over. Right under the letters for called strike two. Three balls and two strikes. Philly moves that bat back and forth easily. Antonelli now, three twos in, but the swung on. There's a high foul ball hit off to the right of the plate. That's going to come into the second tier out of play. Down hold for Dave Philly at three and two. We've lost the sunlight here again. It's starting to get a little dark. Unless we've had a uh, threatening day. Well, I should have said a threatening afternoon. We did have uh, misty cold rain this morning and uh, most of the night. But still, this field is in very fine shape. And well taken care of. And for he's ready now. His 3-2 delivery is the fastball. Come on. And this by Philly is just like three. So Antonelli gets strikeout number seven. And Cleveland has one man out here in the top of the eighth. Jim Hagan, who has had one for three this afternoon, one for seven for the entire series, steps in. All dependable catcher of Cleveland. Places Antonelli with uh, one out, nobody on here in the eighth inning. Three to one in favor of the Giants. Antonelli whistles the first pitch in. The fastball scored through at the knees for a called strike. Cleveland started out in the first inning. It looked as though they were going to clobber Antonelli, but good. And as the boys in the business say, he got over the hump in the first inning. And he's been pretty tough ever since. Delivery is a let-up curve. Swung on a foul back to the screen by Hagan. And <laughs> <laughs> right in the press box. <laughs> Got away from three men in the press box, plus a television cameraman, and rolled right back out onto the field. That is known as the elusive baseball. When you see a baseball do tricks like that, it's uh, what makes you believe there might be a rabbit in a ball after all. Bounce all around. There's only a football that bounces crazily. 
Baseball will, too. Johnny Antonelli, with a new ball to work with, is ready to pitch. Oh, and two to Jim Hegan. One out, nobody on top of the eight for Cleveland. Antonelli delivers, sidearm curve. It is outside. That's ball one. One ball and two strikes. Hagan, tall and slender, leans over the plate, feet wide spread apart. Antonelli, after pumping twice, offers him the one-two pitch, a curve, turn and missed the first trade. Strike out number eight for Antonelli. That brings up an um, early winner of the pinch batter, and it's going to be Hank Majeski. Carl, Carl Erskine, you know, just last year set the strikeout record. In the uh, way in the World Series play, and uh, looking down here, the pitcher's record and so forth in the um, North World Series record book, you can find Carl Erskine's name, so you can check up on me on that. Carl Erskine had 14 strikeouts. That is the record. Hank Majeski now, batting for early win. And Nelly... Throws to this veteran. Pitch a swung on. There's a bounding ball hit to Alvin Dark. It bounces off his chest. He picks up close to first. Just in time. They've got him. Just in time. That was one of those eyelash plays. The arm is out on a close play. Alvin Dark almost had that ball get away from him. Oh, let's see. Nothing across here in the eighth inning. And the score at the end of seven and one half innings of play. Remains the New York Giants three. The Cleveland Indians one. But mind if I take just a few seconds with you guys out there who use the three-piece Gillette razors? So far as all our comfort is concerned, you're doing okay by your face, that's for sure. But for speed and convenience, well, the three-piece, honestly, is just not in the same class with the modern one-piece Gillette Super Speed. For that matter, no other shaving instrument even compares with this precision-made Gillette. There's nothing to take apart. You change blades in a flash to clean, just rinse. What? Shaves, you get clean, comfortable, good looking. They never miss. You really ought to try the Gillette Super Speed. One dollar buys it, complete with travel case and blue blade dispenser. Yes, sir. And the enlarged 112 page fax filled Gillette World Series record book is included free. At shortstop and bat in the number seven position, Sam Dente. Here in the eighth inning, and Don Massey is going to be your pitcher. Dente appearing here for the second time. Comes over to take the shortstop job in the eighth inning. Strickland was lifted for a pinch batter. Of course, as you know, Majeski batted for win in the top half of the eighth inning. Win is out of the ball game now, and coming on is Mossy. A round of applause for early win, ladies and gentlemen, as he makes a long walk to the Cleveland clubhouse. Early win... Here this afternoon in uh, pitching seven innings to the New York Giants. Gave up three runs on four base hits. He walked one man, struck out five, and Wild pitched one time. Well, let's see. We're going to check up on that and make absolutely certain. As far as walks are concerned for early win, he walked two. Walked two. Thank you, Jim. So taking over now is left-hander Don Mussey. M-O-S-S-I. Don Mossy ready to pitch to Whitey Lockman standing in at the plate. He throws a fastball. It's high and inside for ball one. Don Mossy comes down with the next delivery. A fastball swung on by Whitey Lockman and popped up off the right field line. Going deep behind first base is Vic Wirtz in foul territory and takes it for the out. And before we have the next man up, Alvin Dark, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. WGN, your exclusive World Series station in Chicago. The Redwood City, California left-hander Don Mossy on the mound now for Cleveland. Kicks and throws to Alvin Dark. Sends a curve through there but low for ball one. Alvin Dark has one hit, three times up. Oh, 
comes down with his 1-0 delivery. Dark takes fastball, poured in over the shins for ball two. Mossy, a very deliberate worker, hides that ball behind his back. The regular season, he won six and lost one. Got very few starts. Dark slugs at the next pitch and hits a high foul ball coming back near the screen. Bounces off the screen and down onto the playing field. So that means that Alvin's count is two balls, one strike. Mossy in the regular season pitched no shutouts. He pitched in 40 ball games, two of them complete. Struck out 54, gave up 39 bases on balls, surrendered 56 base hits. Had an in-run average of 1.94, and that's pretty sharp. The left-hander pours a fastball into Alvin Dark, and it's high and outside for ball three. Three and one. Don Mossy pitching now for Cleveland. Comes down again with a fastball, and Dark leans into it and doesn't offer. It costs him. It's over. Out is three and two. Mossy, after the rosin bag, looks down to Dark. The way these clouds are moving over here at the polo grounds, here's a 3-2 pitch. Swung on by Dark and laced right to Bobby Avila. Line drive to the second baseman for out number two. It's hard to say here the way these shadows are moving around over the playing field gives you a sort of a weird, eerie feeling. As though someone with a big spotlight is shining him through the clouds at intervals. Now Mossy to face Don Mueller. Don is over three this afternoon, bounced out to second base. First time up, takes a curve, this time high for ball one. Don flied to right field in the fourth and flied out to center field in the sixth. He's over three. Choke hitter, widespread stance at the plate. Mossy comes in with an overhand fastball, and Mueller punches a foul off to the left of the plate back into the stands. One ball, one strike on Don Mueller. Two down, last half of the eighth. There are no base runners. The Giants leading three to one. Darkness is starting to settle down here over Gotham. Mossy pumps, kicks, and throws. Fast ball. Mueller again slaps a foul. This one up to the facade off the left field line. That bounces down into the customers. At Cleveland infield now with Sam Denny at shortstop. Has uh, Vic Wirtz at first, Bobby Vila at second, Sam Denny at short. Rudy Regalotta with third. Mossy delivers an overhand let up curveball. Swung on, hit right back to the mound. Mossy's got it. Fires over to first base to Vic Wirtz. And it's in time for the out. Slight collision between Mueller and Wirtz, but neither man happens to be even shaken up. So that's the third out here for the Giants in the eighth. They have nothing across. And the score at the end of the eighth inning is the New York Giants three, the Cleveland Indians one. Look sharp. Sharp. Be sharp and listen, mister. How are you fixed for blades? Do you have plenty? How are you fixed for blades? You better check. Please make sure you have enough. Cause a worn-out blade makes shaven mighty tough. How are you fixed for blades? Better look to let the blades we need. Look sharp. Be sharp and listen, mister. How are you fixed for blades? You know, we're continually thumbing through the... Gillette World Series record book, and uh, well, I'd like to appraise you of one thing we've uh, come up with. Only once has a team ever lost the first two games and come back to take the World Series. That was in 1921 when the New York Giants did it, as you'll see. Uh, 1921, the Giants did it. They lost uh, two games and then came back to win the series. I well, can pick out all kinds of information in this little book. Now the top of the ninth inning. And the first man up here for Cleveland will be their leadoffer, Al Smith, who punched a home run to lead off the ball game. Let's see, for the New York Giants, as it now stands, three runs, four hits, no errors. They have stranded only three men this afternoon. Check me on those totals, Jimmy. Three runs, four hits, no errors, three men left. Is that right? And see, for the Cleveland Indians, they have one run. On a total of six hits off Antonelli, they've committed no errors, and they have stranded a total of 11. And the first pitch here to Smith is slow outside for ball one. So we've gotten the top of the ninth inning started with Johnny Antonelli working to Al Smith. 
He's had one hit and three tries. That was his home run. Fastball to him is inside off the knees for ball two. Antonelli taking his sign from Western. Johnny pumps. Rares back and delivers fastball. It's fired right through off the belt buckle. A strike one. Two balls and one strike. So the time goes short for the Cleveland Indians. They have three outs left to them to try to do something about a two-run deficit. Three to one in favor of the Giants. Smith waggles that bat back and forth, puts it on his shoulders. Antonelli comes in with a fastball. Swung on, hit right back off the leg of Johnny Antonelli. Dark comes in, picks up bare hand, throws to first, not in time. Smith sliding into first base is there. That was a hard smash off the leg of Johnny Antonelli. Ripped right back through the middle. So that'll go as a base hit for Al Smith to open the ninth inning. That's the seventh hit given up now by Antonelli. And it could be that the Indians are cooking something up in the TP. Bobby Avila was base hit hungry today. He's gone over at three, walked one time. That was his last time up. Prior to that, he'd gone over three. He's coming up. Very quickly, White Wilhelm, the knuckleballer, gets up and starts throwing in a giant bullpen. That was a signal, an alarming one. Antonelli looks down out of Bobby Avila. This guy Smith at first base can really move. He can pick him up and lay him down. Down comes the pitch to Avila. He strides into a curve and doesn't offer. Down in the bullpen. Who do you think starting to throw for Cleveland? Rapid Robert. Bob Feller. Remember when he had that blazing fastball of his? The sports World was talking about how the young fellow from Ben Meter, Iowa, could rear back and pour it in. So he pitches now with his head and his heart. There's a slow curve swung on by Avila and hit foul down the third baseline to run his count to one and one. Two ball in play to Antonelli. Scott Feller warming up the bullpen for Cleveland. Certainly been an asset to that ball club this year. Now Antonelli ready to pitch to Avila on the 1-1 count. Al Smith leading off at first with nobody down, top of the ninth. Three to one, the Giants. Pitch to the plate, swung on by Avila and hit foul right back to the screen. The last uh, three or four years, somebody comes up trying to ring the death knell for uh, Bob Feller in the pitching department. They tried to do it again this spring, but he posted a record of 13 wins for Cleveland this year against three defeats. Against pretty fair country pitching. Now the one ball and two strike pitch to Bobby Avila. Antonelli nods in accord with the sign offered by Westrom. Smith leads off at first, not too big a lead. In comes the pitch, Avila swings, and there's a line shot hit into left field for a base lap. Smith goes down to second to hold on, and the tying runs are on for Cleveland. Bobby Avila wraps one through the hole between short and third and into left field. Smith, playing it safe, goes down to second and holds up. Hit number eight off Antonelli, and look at that Wilhelm thrown out in the bullpen for the Giants now. He's really heating up. Time is called for the minute while Alvin Dark comes in to say something to his pitcher, then says something to Whitey Lockman. A conference between uh, Johnny Antonelli and Wes Westrom. Leo DeRosa comes to the top of the dugout steps and uh, holds up one finger. Of course, that's, uh, that's some sign language to the Giants. Of course, we couldn't begin to interpret it. Johnny Antonelli got himself a peck of trouble here in the top of the ninth inning. The tying runs around for the Cleveland Indians. First and second. Both of them are fast men, and they can move. And this guy up at the plate, Larry Doby, can hit that ball a country mile. Left-hand hitter. Doby's 0 for 4. Swings on the first pitch and fouls it right back to the screen. Antonelli fed him the fastball. Doby back to dry his hands as he picks up a double handful of dirt. Now steps up, puts that left foot forward, gets his stance set well at the plate, gets his spikes ground in. Got to bend slightly at the knees. A lot of tension, a lot of pressure on his shoulders right now. Runners taking their leads at first and second. 
And time is called for the moment while Antonelli backs off the mound, chases the runners back in, and Dolby gets himself set. Now Antonelli comes up to the rubber, to the top of the stretch. Deals off a curve and an attempted bunt by Ardobi is fouled off to the left of the plate. So that was to be Al Lopez's surprise move. Get the runners along, and both of them in scoring position. They're expecting, of course, uh, Larry Doby to be swinging away as he's a powerhouse hitter. With that attempted bunt being fouled off runs his count for strike two, and a big danger of that bunt has been taken off. Although it has been taken off, Thompson is not going to be going too deep there at third base. He's going to stay up almost on the base pass. Right side of the infield playing deep in the event that uh, Doby should uh, swing away and not go after one, although the big danger of the bunt has gone off. Antonelli, then a squeeze here in the top of the ninth inning. Looks back at his runners. Delivers the plate. Doby takes a pitch high by the cap. That's ball one. One ball and two strikes. Right here's a situation, everybody, where a ball game can change in the twinkling of an eyelash. The sun breaks out now and starts to cast those weird shadows down by third base and out in left field. Down comes the pitch sidearm curve. Doby takes it. The sidearm is outside. That's ball two. And if you recall, the sun was shining brilliantly for Cleveland in the first inning when Smith led off with his home run. Then it darkened up, and since that time, it's been playing hide-and-seek with us. Right now, the sun is out. Not a lot of it, but we have it here. Runners at first and second for Cleveland. Nobody out. Top of the ninth inning. Both men on the bases can fly. Smith and Avila. Down comes the pitch. Toby swings and misses. On a fastball for strike three. Johnny Antonelli poured it in there for his ninth strikeout. Poured the fastball to Doby. Three times he has struck out Doby. Let's say we're going to check up on those strikeouts here. Just to make absolutely certain. I've got nine. Good ready? Check me, gentlemen. Nine strikeouts for Johnny Antonelli. Now coming up to the plate is Rudy Regalado for his first at-bat. He took over for Al Rose and ran for him, if you recall, back in the seventh inning and then came in in the bottom of the seventh and played third base. So Regalado is coming in, hitting right-handed. First pitch to him is curveball. Regalado swings on, hits it down to Alvin Dark. He picks up close to Davey Williams for one at second to throw the first, not in time, not in time. So Regalado is the base runner at first base. He, too, is fast. Bobby Avila forced from short to second at second base for the second out. Al Smith moving on over to third. So the tying runs are still on for Cleveland. And here's Vic Wirtz. Well, Vic Wirtz has been the big siege gun. But everybody, I'd just like to say that after the last man is out, be sure to stand by for Bill Coram's summary and highlights of today's game. He should have a lot of them for us. One of the really great students of baseball, Bill brings you the wrap-up of the day's play in his own wonderful way. Antonelli ready now. Pitches to Vic Wirtz hitting left-handed. The fastball is outside for ball one. Have you noticed, everybody, that in the World Series play so far, we've had no double plays, and have been quite a few of them uh, tried. But they haven't quite been able to complete them. Cleveland's still alive and kicking here in the top of the ninth inning. Have the tying runs on. Vic Wirtz, the guy who was the big gun yesterday for Cleveland, is up there at the plate right now. This afternoon, he's had uh, one base hit and two official times up. Swings on this pitch. Plus ball and doesn't get it. Antonelli fed him one just under the letters. One ball, one strike is a count on Victor Wirtz. Right now, batting at 7-14. Tension and pressure mounting here with every pitch. Johnny Antonelli knows the importance of every pitch he's making. Looks over at third base, sees Al Smith stepping off. Looks at first to Regalado, who can move also. Second is open, two down, top of the ninth. Now Antonelli gets set. 
One one delivery to Vic Wirtz. Down it comes. Overhand fastball. Swung on again and missed. Four strike two. Antonelli just ran back and cutting it loose. And time is called for the moment by catcher West Westrom. He goes out to the plate to talk with, out to the mound from the plate to talk with Johnny Antonelli. Looking back over the men left on here this afternoon, Cleveland. Uh, Cleveland has uh, left 11 on. They have two on now, and they left 13 on yesterday. The record for uh, men left on by a single club in uh, a ball game in the World Series, if memory serves me rightly, is 14. Now Antonelli, ready to come in there one and two to Vic Wirtz. It's the last chance here for Cleveland. Antonelli delivers a sidearm curve, low and outside as he tried to cross fire. That's ball two. Antonelli monkeying around at the mound. Once again, Western calls for time to go out and see if his pitcher's all right. Let's see, Cleveland with one run, eight hits. They've committed no errors. And they're uh, battling here in the ninth inning. Try to overcome the two-run lead the Giants now possess. Giants leading three to one. They have three runs on only four hits. They got all four of them off early win. They went seven innings. Now Victor works. Has a count of two and two. And Nelly's ready. Checks his runners. Delivers an overhand fastball. Works. Swings and foul. Tips it right back into the mass. Uh, plate umpire Charlie Berry. That sort of shook Charlie up a little bit. Said he wants to see that ball. Takes it out of play. That hit him in the mask so hard it uh, sort of turned it to the right. Cap and mask and all. So it's no kid's chore behind that plate, either for the catcher or for the umpire. New ball in play to Johnny Antonelli. Count remaining on Victor Wirtz. Two balls and two strikes. Two on, two out. Stop of the ninth. Three to one in favor of the Giants. This ball game going right down to the wire. Just the way it was expected to go ever since uh, we found out. Cleveland and New York are going to play in this one. That Nelly out there blowing his neck trying to uh, get out of this. Ready to pitch to Wirtz. Comes in with an overhand fastball. Wirtz leans back to take it inside for ball three. Well, Mr. Dudley, it's really come down to the wire now, hasn't it? Boy, this is a tense moment, Al. This is what fans dream about. Well, they don't have to dream about this one. It's a reality. It's right here. Three and two. On Victor Wirtz. The two men on. There are two outs for Cleveland. Top half of the ninth inning. And it's all up to the guy wearing number 23. Victor Wirtz, who can slug that ball when he gets a hold of it. He proved that yesterday. He's proved it all season long. John Antonelli breaks back off the rubber. On the runners, Regalado at first and Smith at third. Move back in. Al Lopez comes up to inquire some point of uh, plate umpire Charlie Berry. And they're talking it over. Johnny Antonelli ready to pitch now as Lopez turns and walks back to the Cleveland dugout. Victor Wirtz coming up to the plate after having uh, been off to the side. Steps in, puts a bat up on his left shoulder. Johnny Antonelli gets ready to pitch to him. Looks the situation over, delivers an overhand fastball swung on as Regalado breaks from first and it's fouled right back to the screen. So Regalado was making way for Vic Wirtz. That ball uh, caught up behind the screen, up in the second tier, and a fan crawled out on the overhanging ledge to pick it up. So, everybody, Vic Wirtz is still alive and kicking here in the ninth inning. Smith steps off at third. Regalado moves away from first. They're representing the tying runs for Cleveland. Victor Wirtz up there with a count of three and two. He's given uh, Johnny Antonelli a bad time, and Antonelli's trying to do the same for him. Now Johnny's ready. So is Vic Wirtz. Down comes the pitch as the runner breaks. Again, it's swung on. There's a high foul ball spinning back to the top of the roof. Oh, the count holds right on. The Vic Wirtz at three and two. Fred Kress yells down from his first base coaching spot. Tony Cuccinello behind third. Both hooping it up, trying to uh, get Vic Wirtz, get a hold of one. John outfield around the right and deep. Right side of the infield deep. Regalado will be moving again from first on toward second when Antonelli pitches 3-2 to Vic Wirtz. He's ready now, and there's the throw to first base. Almost got away from Whitey Lockman. 
Why, I wasn't quite expecting it, I don't believe. Big ooh and an ah from the fans. Regalado was playing a real close. He wasn't going to get too far away. Dick Wurtz is back to visit the batter's rosin bag. Kicks him out out of his spikes with the meat end of the bat. Comes right back up there and digs in, gets his stance. Johnny Antonelli ready to pitch to him. Three and two. Johnny sets. Delivers. Fastball. Swung on by Wurtz. Hit out into left field. Dusty Rhodes comes over, gets under it. He's got it. The ball game is over. for Cleveland here in the top half of the ninth inning. No runs. There were two base hits. No, no errors. Two men were left off. Well, that's it. The Giants take the second one. And that gives them two of two now. The final score, the New York Giants, three runs, four hits, no errors. They had three men left on. For the Cleveland Indians, one run, eight hits, no errors. They had 13 men left. The winning pitcher is Johnny Antonelli. The losing pitcher is early win. Now, everybody, in just a moment, Bill Corm will review the highlights of today's game for you. Viv makes you look so wonderful. That's Viv. V-I-V. New Viv lipstick by Tony. Viv makes you look so wonderful. Yes, because Viv is a new kind of lipstick. Never before a lipstick so red. No, never before a lipstick so red. In six vivid red shades. From pink to plum. One shade is redder than a fire engine. Another is redder than a rose. Each new shade is more vivid than... Looks so wonderful. That's Viv. V-I-V. New Viv lipstick by Tony. Viv makes you look so wonderful. Yes, because Viv is a new kind of lipstick. Never before a lipstick so red. No, never before a lipstick so red. In six vivid red shades. From pink to plum. One shade is redder than a fire engine. Another is redder than a rose. Each new shade is more vivid than reds have ever been before because they have a new depth of color. Viv makes you look so wonderful. It makes you look and feel so vividly alive. Viv makes you look so wonderful. Viv stays on, yet keeps your lips soft, moist, and smooth because Viv is the comfortable, long-lasting lipstick. See what Viv, the really vivid lipstick, can do for you. Viv makes you look so wonderful. Viv, new Viv lipstick by Tony. This is Bill Corum speaking, and man, man, was that some finish. Had your heart right up in your throat because uh, it could have been anybody's ball game right down to the last pitch with the mighty Vic Wirtz, who's been taking the John pitchers apart, particularly yesterday, and... The big hitter in the series so far, aside from Dusty Rhodes, who's sensational. And, of course, his last home run that he hit today, as different from the one that he hit yesterday, he needed no Chinese laundry ticket on that one. That one hit the upper facade, and it was really tattooed. So on three trips to the plate, this old-fashioned pinch hitter, and that's Dusty Rhodes for sure, he thinks he can hit anybody in the world, has driven in five runs, and that has made the difference for the Giants. That is offensively, of course. But today, the story with me was Johnny Ananelli. Great athlete, great pitcher, great boy, and he's going to be, is already one of the very best in the game. Won 21 games for the Giants this year as their star pitcher, and beat Captain Early Wynn. The number two ace are one of the big three, whichever way you want to make it, of the Indians. And, of course, put the Giants in a very, very happy spot. They've beaten both Bob Lemon, who Al Lopez got 23 lemonades out of in the American League, which is a lot of lemonades from any lemon, even as big a final one as Bob. They've beaten him, and they've beaten early win here today. Win the veteran, the cagey old veteran, pitching well, heavily and strong, as Lemon did yesterday, but being outpitched a little bit, not in hits. The Giants just made them count but a little bit in the runs where games are won and lost by this big, fine kid, Johnny Ananelli, a bonus baby with the Braves, as many of you know, though he doesn't particularly like the word, and he's a real big leaguer now. Nobody's going to have to keep him on any bonuses on any ball club. Very uh, odd thing about Ananelli, and perhaps uh, everybody doesn't know it, uh, that makes him a great pitcher, and I got this from Wes Westrom, the fellow that catches him, old Iron Mike, 
pretty and smart as catchers come on his final receiver and hitting pretty well in this series, too, he is. He told me that most most pitchers, when they, uh, when they had to make a pitch, as Adam Ellie did here on the last fly ball from Works to uh, left field, they have just one great pitch to rely on. This fellow can throw you any one of his three, and Westrom himself says he doesn't know which is the best of the three. And by that I mean, of course, his fastball, his curve, and his changeup. He can use any one in any tough spot, in any given spot, and it's just as good as the other, uh, according to Westrom. So, he was today a fine pitcher, and as we swing toward Cleveland and the World Series cavalcade hits the road for that great city where we'll play tomorrow, weather permitting, at Municipal Stadium... Dusty Rhodes has been doing about all the hitting here. He, of course, came up as a pinch hitter, and that was the 17th time in 47 trips to the plate as a pinch hitter that he had gotten a hit. And, uh, of course, uh, that's great pinch hitting, and you have to differentiate it from his home run. He wasn't a pinch hitter then, of course. He was in the game in place of Monty Irvin in left field and did play out there quite a part of the latter part of the season in left field. But as a pinch hitter, 17 for 47, well, that's that's really pinch hitting. And I know no better way to describe him than to say that he is an old-fashioned one that walks up there just as sure as a lot of odd incidents and records in every World Series. I'm sure never before have there been two pitches on two, I mean, two home runs on two pitches uh, such as we saw in last night's game with Rhodes hitting, and then Al Smith walking up and getting Cleveland's only run today on the first pitch off Annanelli. Well, a great ball game. You know the Giants won 3-1. to one. You know they lead the series 2 to nothing, and they're sitting in the honey seat right now, whatever happens from now on. Now, this broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our listening audience. And any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express consent of the commissioner is prohibited. Now, tonight, we want to thank our engineers, Gifford Camel and Don McLean, our statistician, Frank Zuzulo, and this program was directed and produced under the supervision of mutual sports director, my good friend, Paul Jonas. And don't forget, tomorrow afternoon, at from Municipal Stadium in Cleveland, the third game of the World Series. And fans, tomorrow is another day, and Gillette's Cavalcade Sports will be back on the air promptly at 12.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to report the third game of the World Series for you, play-by-play from Municipal Stadium in Cleveland. Until then, smooth sailing, smooth shaving, and good afternoon from your radio host, the Gillette Safety Razor Company, and yours truly, Bill Cole. For now, the blade makes shaven mighty. How oh, are you fix for the blade? Better look to let the blade we need.